Well, welcome, welcome, guys, uh, to another video. In fact, the music's probably way too loud. Let's do that again. Welcome, welcome, guys, to another video. Um, it's Expansion 4. It's Secrets of the Obscure. My God, you know, it's actually been two years since End of Dragons came out. Um, but for Guild Wars, I mean, this is a quick turnaround, X-Pack to X-Pack. It's very odd for me right now. I really feel like I'm in End of Dragons mode. Um, but yeah, so we're in a whole new era. We've got a whole new background here. Uh, new music that you can hear that hopefully isn't too overwhelming uh, in this series um, I'm gonna be doing a full run through of the X-Pack uh, But more than that now. I, I've done that with the other X-Packs before uh, More than that on this one. I'm gonna actually try to get all the content say with end of dragons uh, We did some of the side stuff like the extra achievements at the end uh, And they were really 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 good in fact We did a bunch of content on that series that were like essentially big storylines, serious quests, hints about the future of the game and the world and, you know, uh, lore expansion and actually decent mechanics and stuff. Cool special actions you get and boss fights and things. Um, it was a lot of content that a lot of people miss and that's one of the things that gives me a lot of satisfaction doing YouTube videos, actually just showing off things in games that people would normally miss. Um, but I didn't, like, do all of it. I, I mean, I did the vast majority of the genuinely really good stuff, but... Um, there were a lot of things in that expansion that still I didn't show. I didn't really go into it the mind of like a 100% run. However, uh, for Secrets of the Obscure, that's what I want to do. One, because End of Dragons demonstrated that that kind of content can actually be really good and worthwhile showing off and doing. Um, but also, this is a slightly different kind of expansion. It's a little bit smaller in scope. Its contents are spread out throughout the entire year. So really, we've only we've got the first big bulk, the major bulk of the expansion here. But, you know, there's going to be significant updates to this in three months, three months again, three months again. Um, and then we'll be on another goddamn one, which is totally crazy. So um, I'm thinking it's really doable, right? Because of the new scope, it's super doable to actually go through everything. So I'm going to call this... I, I haven't had the confidence to do this just yet <laughs> in the title, but... Essentially, I'm thinking this will be a hundred percent run. All right, and I really do mean a hundred because that's kind of what I do with the game anyway Let's log in. Um, and we're gonna be playing Liss for this my original main um, And the reason for that is because the new weapon mastery content stuff uh, has come out and um, There are some fun weapon combos that I want to try now a lot of Ellie players out there will just be thinking about you know taking putting a war horn onto a, a weaver uh, I don't really care about that. I don't care about big hitbox raid damage. I don't, you know, and plus there was that n sort of nerf to normalize it. What I really want to do is I want to play um, ca uh, Hammer, first of all. The, the Catalyst Hammer, I think, is amazing. I've been playing a lot of PvP recently, and I'm just super into that weapon. Um, but also, I think Hammer could be really good on core builds. I think Hammer could be really good on Tempest, and I think Hammer could be really good on uh, Weaver. Weaver is the first one that I want to try because now I've played a little bit of it. Um, hold on, I'll probably turn chat off just for now. Uh, I've played a little bit of it in PvP, and it really, really changes the weapon, the way that the achievements mess around. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, also, the other thing about Liss, you know, for years I've kind of had this, this look on Liss with the Witch's Hat. In the game, there have been two hats like this. Um, there's another one that has like a, a ribbon on it. And some of them are quite old. Like, I think they come from festivals or they're, they're pretty difficult to get. And they take a, you know, they're not re really very common. However, with Secrets of the Obscure, as like a pre order bonus people could get, ArenaNet released another wizard's hat. And I should have it here somewhere. Here, the Arcane Spellweaver's hat. And suddenly, everyone's using hats like this. And it's kind of weird, actually. It's like I feel like I had my special little look, and now there's just wizards and witches everywhere. Which is fine, you know, because that's kind of in theme with the expansion storyline. So anyway, we're going to run this. I guess we'll dye it slightly. This is one of those weird hats that gives you hair, but dyeable hair. So we have to figure out how the hell to get a hair that looked like her original hair. Let's just go with that, I suppose. It's a very odd style. And then I guess I put the orange on again, which I had before. We could do the runes in orange. And then we could, I don't know. White looks too striking. What other colors have I ever got? I've just got orange and black. As you all know, I'm not that good at fashion <laughs> the fashion wars, so don't expect anything too amazing. Let's just do bloody red, right? Uh, it kind of fits. Uh, it looks better out of the dye panel. There you go, kind of fits. 
<laughs> Some people are going to be looking at that really annoyed that it doesn't totally match. But whatever. We got we got multiple days, multiple things to do. For this per first part, I really want to just kind of get into the meat of the expansion. Um, show you guys some of the story. So let, let's talk about that. I um, I didn't really cover much of the press for this x pack. I didn't, you know, haunt Twitter and look at all their little, um, you know, teaser posts. I say little teaser posts. I don't mean to be derisive there. I, I think it's really good that they were actually teasing things and trying with the marketing. Uh, I didn't, you're, if you guys remember, one of the first things they did was um, like there was a, a flash teaser of, a, of someone laughing, some entity laughing. I didn't do a video talking about that. They did a bunch of blog posts about Felicia Day or, you know, um, interviews and things with websites about Felicia Day coming back as Zoja, a character who's been missing for years and they haven't really had any explanation about it. I've done a little bit of discussion about that, but I didn't like read through the full blog posts. Uh, I basically skipped a huge amount of the story and the teaser discussion with this x back um, And look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think it's fair to say that if I was more happy with the story in this game, I probably would still be that guy that was, you know, making tiny videos of, or, you know, or even long videos about tiny pieces of information because I'm just that excited about Tyria and I want to see where it goes and I want to see this and I want to see that. But, you know, I've got to be honest, there were huge parts of the Ice Brood saga that really crushed me with this game, the Prime Order stuff, namely. And we'll, I think there's a cool tongue in cheek comment about that in this expansion. Um, there were also a, a fair few things. End of Dragons was like hit or miss, it did some things extremely well, and then it did some things in a really weird way that I, w I didn't vibe with. Probably the worst of them all was kind of how they seemed to suggest Elder Dragons made the world and stuff, and they, they raised it a bit too high. I know that in some ways you can choose to ignore that. We'll talk about that as we go along, and it feels like this expansion does. Um, and, you know, it had other cool stuff with, like, the vampires and whatever. But, um, you know, End of Dragons was very hit on this. And the Giala Delve patches, uh, the most recent content we had before this expansion... You know, I, I really didn't gel with these either. Not from a gameplay or a story Citizen. perspective, really. I mean, the gameplay is a little bit better than I think I give it credit for. And in fact, when I was getting my achievements there, I ended up kind of liking the map. I know that's bizarre, but... Um, uh, yeah, basically, I, I just want to be real here. I, I haven't been that into the story. And so my motivation for those kinds of videos and stuff was, was kind of low. So I kind of ignored a lot of those details. Went into this very fresh and very blind. And so, just to be clear, yesterday I played Secrets of the Obscure um, for a good few hours. Now, I haven't beaten the story. I haven't got map comp on any of the maps. I, I've not done a huge amount of the masteries or anything. I really, I'm not that far in, um, though it's a short expansion, so actually maybe I am. We'll, we'll see. Um, and I have to say, from what I played yesterday, I'm really impressed. Genuinely really impressed. Now, I've mentioned... Um, a few uh, a few times recently last Halloween they did uh, a little quest series a, li a little collection a little achievement progression that you can go through um, out here in Kryta, uh to in conjunction with extra life which is going on right now actually I guess it's a year old this this thing is a year old um, and they started talking about a lot of Guild Wars 1 lore in it I have a stream on that you guys might want to watch it they were talking about Jadon and they were talking about the Massar and they were talking about the Mesmer Collective from Guild Wars 2 and it was like really good it was like they've properly deeply understood the law and what was like quite exciting about the law and like old stuff about the law as well and i remember as well um i think it was somewhere around the giala delve i can't remember maybe one of the festivals or something there was like a little law book like a jokey law book that you could read and uh, it wasn't even somewhere around the dock that we're currently standing at and there were all these like cool glimpses of like really decent law stuff and i thought and i remember remarking on that in a video at some point over the past year wow that's pretty good um and these tiny little things kind of gave me hope that the future expansions would kind of continue on in that trend um and it, it i'm telling you seekers of the obscure has it really has it's funny this is the first expansion where we are not going to a guild wars one area right for um uh um path of fire we went to the nightfall areas for um uh, End of Dragons, we went to the Canthan areas for uh, the first expansion. We went to the Maguma Jungle, which was a prophecies area, but that had been cut off. For the first time, we're going to, and, and, you know, the Ice Boot Saga, we're going to Eye of the North areas. We're now somewhere totally new. Not that they haven't dipped us into totally new areas before. This, ostensibly, is not a Guild Wars 1 expansion. Ostensibly. But seriously, it, um, it feels more 
like the first game and more rich and connected to the first game than anything else. Now, <clears throat> don't, me let me, don't let me ramble. I'm, I'm proper being a salesman about this here because I really do think it's very good. Don't let me ramble about the, the first game too much here because it's not just what I'm enjoying about it isn't just that it feels like the first game. It's something else, okay? It's a feeling that you get when you sit down and you play a single player RPG or a very, very carefully and cleverly woven MMO. 14 is a lot like this, right? I get a vibe while playing Secrets of the Obscure like they really, really figured out Tyria's history and story and like they made some concrete decisions about the setting and it make, for, for the first time in a long time I, if, it really makes me kind of want to invest in Tyria. So what do I mean by that? Like, like when, when the first game was ending and they gave us that article, The Movement of the World, and they said, oh, 250 years are going to pass and the Elder Dragons are going to be here, you know, it really felt like they figured a lot of stuff out about Tyria. And it was exciting. It was like, wow, this is a cool fantasy world that they have big ideas for. It's easy to become a fan of it. When Guild Wars 2 actually came out, they expanded on some of those topics. You had the hidden city of Arar, and they talked a lot more about the previous Elder Dragon rising. They talked about what the Jotun did. They talked about you know, like history, what happened in the game's past. They snuck in, you know, Morgamoth, there were those little hints. There were real tangible things that they clearly sat down and said, all right, this is plotted out, but we're not talking about this yet, and so on. However, that was 2012, okay? After Heart of Thorns, a couple of years later, even before then, at the end of season one, let's be honest, because that's when the Morgamoth thing was fully revealed. Ever since then, and I really do mean ever since then, it's felt kind of wishy-washy about actually exploring the setting and the story of what Tyria is and where it is and what's going on. It's just been kind of, oh, here's, here's our new characters, here's the current events. Oh, maybe we'll deal with this. Oh, we'll chop and change it at the last minute. It's felt very floaty. Do you get what I mean? And it feels like due deference isn't paid to previous setups. Things are just forgotten. You know, when, when, when I look at, like, the all-time worst moment for me of the story, the Primordus moment, you know, why does the Primordus thing sting that much? Is it because I'm a huge Primordus fanboy? Maybe I'm a bit of a Primordus fanboy, but I think why it really stings is it's like they don't really care about the setup, the progression towards it. You know, they don't really, they didn't, you know, it's like Eye of the North and the story of the Great Destroyer and that amazing cliffhanger at the end of the Eye of the North. You know, it's like that stuff didn't matter anymore. It's like things could just flip around and... There was something odd about it, you know, something very wishy-washy, and that's kind of a vibe I've had for ages. But when I'm playing Secrets of the Obscure, I get a very, very different vibe. I get a really good, like, strong prospect that Tyria has stuff going on. It might not be revealed at the moment, but it's worth looking at. And hopefully you guys will see that as we play through it. Maybe I'm just being given fan service and losing my nut over it and I'm being completely idiotic here. But that's kind of how I feel and it's a great feeling. So, so far, this has really impressed me. Um, and to be clear, I finished the first map and got to the hub and explored a bit of the hub, okay? Just for anyone who's gone a lot further than me. It's, it's crazy, guys. When I logged in yesterday, <laughs> there were people in the guild chat saying stuff like, oh, you know, I've been in map comp already, or uh, you look at your friends list or the guild list and you see where everyone is. It's just nuts. Uh, if you guys want to join the guild, just send me a mail in game and um, uh, you can join. I'm happy, by the way, throughout these videos, we can play together, we can do the metas together, stuff like that. So you go, that's a bit of a preamble. There's other really cool things about the expansion here. Uh, there's the Wizard's Vault to look at, the new daily login reward system. Um, I want to do a review of this. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not so happy with this one, I think, so far. But it's like a starting... This is the problem. It's always a fucking starting point. If they go further with it, I, I, I'm interested. I think I'll do a proper review. I'll do like an ink-style black line chest review of this or something. Uh, relics are interesting as well. I One of the first things I did was start PvPing when the X-Pack came out. I was so excited about new builds. I'm playing a power block dagger ambush mirage. So you fire off the three app daggers and they all daze and you play it with domination so it's 25 vuln instantly, interrupts the crap out of people. I'm doing it with a carrion amulet so you get like the power damage on there but also I have Condi. There's a new relic that like stacks ludicrous confusion if you CC someone who's already got a bit of torment or confusion on them. It's pretty cool. It's not very strong but uh, you know I'm having fun with the build craft. It's really cool. It's like the build craft side of the game, you, they so, so rarely do a big shake up. 
It's really fun to sit down and look through my rune list and be like, which one's strong. A lot of it's kind of weird, though, um, in terms of, like, you look at a Revenant rune or a Trapper rune or a Guardian rune or a Warrior rune, and the themes and the names and the art for the icons of all these runes has absolutely no relevance to the stats they give you anymore, and it just feels very sloppy and weird. So I don't know what they'll do about that eventually, but hey. Okay, um, so yeah, just lots going on with the game. Lots of fun. Let's get in there. I don't want to bore people to tears here. This is obviously going to be a long series, though, so I'm not too scared to just sit and chat. Um, I did want to kick it off. Uh, I, I only bought the expansion, like, last weekend um, and got this hat. I also, I have IRL a cup of coffee with me here, and... Oh, I have sip coffee. My girlfriend got me this uh, code. There was a promotion that they did recently. You have to buy some physical IRL coffee and they'll give you a code. And they kind of fucked it up for her. She had to like message them and be like, hey, I didn't get a code. And But whatever. And she gave me the code, which is just incredibly nice. So I actually have this now. And this is quite appropriate for my streams, I think. <laughs> what I love about this emote is... Um, it's one of those like continuous emotes. It just rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. So in theory, while I'm rambling away, I could just sit here. Uh, the Lion's Arch music, we're muting it for now. Um, I could just sit here doing this. Uh, I am still vaguely doing the whole Guild Wars Master thing, by the way, guys. I haven't really dropped that. I'm still going for every single skin. I'm still trying to unlock as much as possible. Um, skiffs I haven't been going for. The thing is, there's no like emote panel. I think I feel like Arena Net really should do that at some point. You know, here there should be one that says emotes, so I can see what emotes I have unlocked. It looks like Secrets of the Obscure is going bigger on unlocking emotes too. I don't even think there's like a command for like slash emote list or something, is there? No, so... Oh no, there is! And it just worked. Wow, I just totally gambled that that would work, and it did. So, you know, there is a list here. Um... But hey, so I would like—I would rather see you know actual previews, and that's a good point as well. The Wizards Vault is even giving you an emote at the moment. If we go to the Astral Rewards, where is it? Like right now, if I click the shoulder skin, it gives me a little preview of it, which is good. Well done. The mount skin, it gives me a preview of it, but then like the weapons doesn't, and I can't even write. Can I click the eyeball? Okay, a few clicks and you can do it, so that's fine. Um, but the emote won't. <clears throat> Which is the point I'm really trying to make. This bless emote looks cool in the picture. But there is no preview. There is no panel. If they had a panel for that, then they could do stuff like that. But yeah, so... Uh, right, right. I bought the expansion. It gives you gems. With the gems, I got some keys. And I didn't use the keys because I knew they'd update the Black Lion chest on the day. The Etherbound stuff is some of the only weapons where... Uh, Black Lion sets where I still don't really have some stuff. So, um, yeah, let's let's start this off with a key opening. People always like watching those, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. I've sorted Liss's inventory out really well here, by the way. I know it looks a little bit messy. That's just because I've been doing fishing recently. But um, her inventory is, like, fully maxed out. All the slots are... Oh, they gave a new bag slot! Oh, my God, that just came in with the X-Pack. But this here, I made this a Cowrie League sa saddlebag. And this means when you're, like, opening champ bags and stuff, all... Like here, for example, when I open this material bag... The materials all come down here, and then when you hit deposit, they all cleanly deposit away. This stuff's filled in my bank, so we'll have to deal with that. But it's so good. I really like the way I've got our inventory set up. You can't see it right now. I know it looks like a mess, but you will before the end, I promise. Yeah, oh, and there was a key, a free key in the gem store as well. So if you guys are uh, interested in that, you can... If, if, if I get something cool here, I don't know, you can try your luck with a free one. I think they were actually very clever about a lot of this stuff because they have supply drops going on at the moment as well. You know, you spend a load of gems and over the next four weeks you get big items and things. In previous expansions they've done that, but what they've done is they've released the Ultimate Edition and then like done the supply drop right around the same time, I believe. And what that's meant is people buy the Ultimate Edition and then just spend all their, their gems straight away on the Ultimate Edition, on the, um, the supply drop. But this time they did a bit of a delay, which I think was very clever, because what probably will have happened now is people will have bought Ultimate Edition, spent all their gems on random crap, then the supply drop came in, so now they're like, oh, maybe I want to spend more gems to get that. And now on launch day, they give you a free key, which reminds you of keys, and you might end up spending more keys there. And they give you a free revive orb, which a lot of players might not really care about or know, but it'll be sitting in their inventory. They'll die in a meta event or something, and they'll see that new bit of the UI unlock, and they'll be like, oh, a revive orb, that's cool. And that's another reminder, and then they'll be like, okay, I'll go get some more of those. So there's been like, they've trickled out some very careful reasons why people might go to the gem store. And that's exactly the kind of like stuff that I think they should be doing. You know, 
Um, but hey, so. This is rather rare. I really think there's some money on this x pack. What, what I really want out of these are these items here. The armor unlocks, the weapon unlocks, the guaranteed unlocks. Each of these, essentially, because I have, like, baseline most of the skins in the game, if I get one of these, you're looking at any a, a minimum of 30 gold. Um, but potentially hundreds, thousands of gold, because it will give me mounts and stuff. Uh, if your account isn't at a place where you've bought, like, all the cheapy items... And that used to be pretty doable. It's very hard now. Like, there's a lot you got to go through. Um, I think this guy's asking me to AT. And I'm not going to be doing automated tournaments. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of tournaments lately, which is funny because I had that really terrible experience doing tournaments before where my team was filled with hackers and bots. And after that, I, well, not bots, just hackers. And after that, I, I was like, I'm never doing tournaments again. This is ridiculous. Because, like, I only played a couple just for, like, my legendary ring or whatever it was. Um, and I thought, no, I just can't do this. But, uh, you know, over the past month or so, I've played a lot of them. And it's just it's such crazy gold, guys. It's unbelievable. I don't really know what's going on with the price of Mystic Coins at the moment. But I get a lot of them from the tournaments. So here, what we do with our statuettes. Maybe there's something good for me to buy here. But generally... Wait, urgent what? No, I'm no seriously, I'm busy. <laughs> He's got 20 seconds to fill a team for a tournament. And he can't get it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is like the prime tournament of the day uh, as well. Um, oh, wait, it's not Matt Day, is it? M the monthly is in what? Yeah, no, the monthly's in three days. That'll be interesting. I, I, I do want to play that. I played the last monthly um, just in LFG and got 100 gold out of it, which was really quite cool. Um, okay, so two wardrobe unlocks with the 30. Okay, and now we can open these. Now, the risk now, though... Is some new stuff got added, like these, the officer's remnant stuff, the chained stuff, the Junline Nephrite stuff. Oh, these energized things, these are all from Giala Delvin. They're like 30 gold a pop, and I haven't bought these yet, though, because they're the newest patch. The War Machine stuff kind of sucks to roll because um, that's just like world versus world beta stuff. And I suppose it's kind of interesting um, to get them all when, in theory, you, there haven't been enough betas for it yet. But still, I, I don't know if I'm all about it, really. But yeah, there there are other good things. That's that's weapons. If I preview one of these, you know, we can get outfits. We can get the glider, the last glider, the jet, the dies. These um these minis are all worth like a bomb each either as well. So there we go. Let's just see what we get. I'll do the weapon first. War machine. See, and I swear, do you guys remember when we did the Black Lion Gang stuff, where it had like it could roll like loads of mounts and things, and um, it was only when I unlocked everything else it started spamming me with legendaries. We got like one legendary mount through luck, but it was only when I had everything else that then the legendaries started coming in. I feel like these are the same, and like the war machine stuff, which are essentially valueless in a way, they have really high rolls to um, to drop. Here, the armor one's very good. I mean, look at this. If I do this, I'm gonna get gem store armor or a backpack. So we get the faux fire chest guard. I don't know what that sold for originally. Probably 400 gems, maybe more, 600, 800 at a push. So Dekebi, that's very expensive at the moment. Very happy with that. Etherbound, that's in the, the chests at the moment. So probably dropping in price. Bit of a bad roll, but whatever. Eagle Eye, okay. These are really cheap and they're from the new expansion. Like super cheap. This is just a basic collection. So that was a, that was a very bad roll. But Snowdrift, I think that was a Winter's Day thing that I missed last year when I wasn't participating very much. Oh, I know of a good use for so anyway, there we go. So, a little bit of a Black Lion thing. And we get some skins and stuff. I'll probably sell those later. I really don't like messing... I've realised this. I really don't like messing with my inventory when I'm making videos. Because we want to get to the content, don't we? I'm sure someone will put a timestamp or something in the, in the, uh, the comments. Alright, there you go. So, let's uh, kick up the story. <clears throat> Do I give you guys a reminder of where we are in the plot? Aurina's just gone to sleep. She to to regulate the magic of Tyria, and she seems to be fine in that um, she will sleep. She'll regulate it. She won't fall to the void. Oh, here's another thing that's really impressed me about Secrets of the Obscure. I kind of... Do you know what? I'm too close to the development of this franchise. That's what it is. I think too much about how it was made because like 
for me, I've been thinking of End of Dragons as just like a hard line in the sand and just like, okay, we're done with the Dragon Saga. We're just making a hard cut now. We're doing other stuff and we're walking away from it. That's kind of how I've been thinking of it. But they're really good at the start of this. They talk about what immediately just happened. It feels like stuff might immediately become relevant again. They don't just unceremoniously drop everything and, you know, and I kind of get the sense that they would because they're always so constrained for time, you know. They've, they, we get a limited amount of gameplay, a li limited amount of story, a little bit, of, limited amount of voice acting. So, you know, if we're going to drop something, drop it quickly. But no, I don't get that vibe while playing Secrets of the Obscure. Like, they'll talk about Aureen here and, you know, the chance that maybe she will fall to the void and stuff. And I know if you watched my stream on this interlude patch... I was kind of saying, oh, God, obliterate Aureen, get away from her and stuff. But I kind of, I like how cohesive the whole thing feels. Anyway, so, yeah, Aureen went to sleep. We are basically in a happy ever after right now. Like, the first one since the game came out, a proper one. I mean, maybe the end of Core kind of had it, because there were no particularly active Elder Dragons at that point. Hmm. I mean, there were, but they were always a little bit unclear about what active meant versus awake versus asleep and stuff. But, um, yeah, okay, so, uh... We're just chilling. I, I, that's a recap you're going to get there, guys. <laughs> this is very cool, by the way. Uh, you will see. And uh, Okay, oh, and the other conversation is about asset reuse. And like, oh, is this expansion just full of, you know, all the old stuff? <clears throat> and I want to be clear, because I've been a little bit whiny about this uh, in some recent commentary. Um... Look, I, d I don't want to see a bunch of asset reuse. I want to go on a new adventure. I want to feel like I'm in a new place. I want to meet new people, a new locale. I want to go to a new continent. I want to feel like how factions made me feel in Guild Wars 1. I want to feel like how um, Elona made me feel in Nightfall. I want to feel how Eye of the North made me feel, especially Eye of the North, weirdly enough, because the quality was just so such so bumped up and it expanded the world map and stuff i want to feel how i used to feel you know that kind of bubbling excitement you get in your chest i want to feel that like when you go to a totally new game like i had a couple of years ago when i went to wow classic seriously because i'd never played it when i you know when it was originally out um that's how i want to feel and asset reuse doesn't give you that asset reuse just makes you think oh okay i've seen this before or whatever that's my commentary that's the whiny commentary that i've been doing recently i do want to say though i think it is smart for the studio to do it you know, I think it is economical, and I think that there are a lot of cool things in the game that don't get spotted enough. So let's look at POF, for example. POF, to me, people were talking about this in Discord the other day, or maybe it was in Game Guild Chat. Um, you know, what's the best expansion? And I said that POF is a 10 out of 10. It's easily the best expansion. It had the scope, the scale, it had brilliant new gameplay systems. The only place that POF dropped the ball... And it did drop the ball in one place, and it's an important place, especially coming out of Heart of Thorns. It dropped the ball with metas. You know, its metas sucked. They weren't very captivating. They weren't very rewarding, is the important thing to most MMO players. And because it was bad with metas, you know, there's a huge bulk. Your average, you know, casual to mid-core player that just doesn't experience POF, really, on the repeat and since it came out. And what does that mean? That means that when you look at some of the emails, like the, the the giant forge demolisher that spawns here, the demolisher's fucking badass. It's got so many cool animations, a beautiful model. It's really cool. But nobody sees it ever, really. You don't get to enjoy it in the way that many of us have enjoyed the Garant for the past, you know, over half a decade. So, you know, POF dropped the ball on there. When we come to Secrets of the Obscure and the idea of reuse, they can look at stuff like that. You know, we haven't fought the forge at all, guys. Not in a single living world patch has the forge appeared no strike missions no fractals nothing for no current events the forged as a as a as an archetype are gone you know the awakened kind of fell into that a little bit as well so if reuse allows them to play with stuff like that i think that is a positive thing and there are things about secrets of the obscure that i liked with that so far uh so, you know, it's an up and it's a down. I don't just want to be whining about the uh, the asset reuse. Okay, there you go. That's it, though. And we'll see whether we get that new adventure feeling, because we may, we may not. Um, I just want to take a second to say hello to chat, by the way, because I've seen you guys, the, the messages flying past there, but I haven't really read any deeply. Let's see if anyone's got any questions. WP, are you planning on doing a shorter video or summary of this? You don't have the time to watch a full stream. Yeah, I don't know. Um... What I would like to do is kind of, once I've beat the story, do like a sum up of my, my experiences. Um, and there are a few things I'd like to do individual videos about. Like, for example, I don't want a review of the Wizard's Vault to be buried in a long-form 
piece like this. I'd rather it be out there on its own. So we'll see. Um, uh, Tulip says there's actually a mob in Secrets of the Obscure that uses forged animations. Yes, I know. I'm using that example for a reason. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's let's head on in there. Oh yeah, I got relics as well. So we got to equip a relic onto this. Uh, so the new slot here. Uh, I honestly don't know where they could have put this on the UI. It kind of feels like an accessory, so fine, I suppose. It feels a little bit more than an accessory. There's a lot I could talk about this. I I'm interested in the fact that they kept like links and traveler runes with the 25% movement. Um, as uh, on the, uh, they kept that baked into runes instead of splitting that away, which is nice. It means that you can now combo that with other perks and things from a competitive perspective. Uh, does anyone have a cool idea? So the big one really is a lot of them are giving you like a 10% modifier and one of them is called fireworks We can preview it actually Here fireworks and it's you get the modifier every time you use a, an ability with a recharge of 20 seconds or more on Elementalist because you have four attunements you're gonna get a lot of those so um, <clears throat> a weapon skill with a recharge of 20 seconds or more so it's kind of just like best in slot for Ellie I think that's fine, by the way. If different rune relics are best in slot for different classes because of how their mechanics play out, that's cool. But I don't know whether they've got nine. You know, they probably just have this fairly. We'll see. Um, and that's for PvE, you know, stacking together. What we're going to be doing is open world. I kind of like quality of life. I like utility. So to be honest, I was thinking of going with the speed relic, which is the speed rune bonus, which essentially means that swiftness feels a lot more like super speed than swiftness, and that's under survival. I really like that for running around in the open world. I think it's cool. But there are other flashy ones that do really crazy things. You can get access to them all right now in PvP, um, and they're really bonkers, but uh, they're not in these chests. They're like expansion rewards, so I won't be able to get those just yet. <clears throat> um... In chat, someone says the lagging sucks. The new daily system did not need to happen. It did, man. The, the old daily system sucked. I don't know what you're talking about. It definitely sucked. I don't want to get in massive fights with people in the argument, in the uh, comments or anything, especially not right at the start. But the old dailies sucked. They needed to be telegraphed better. They needed better rewards under a more cohesive system. This was the right move. Whether they pulled it off correctly, uh, we will see. I want to review the Wizards of All. I think they dropped the ball. But the idea... Um, and, and what they've got is a starting point anyway, so it's not a total waste of time. Um, Relic of the Warrior, I feel like, isn't that buffed? Didn't that used to be 20% instead of 25? So I don't know. Anyone got any Relic ideas? I'm open to suggestions and conversation and back and forth. The, the daily thing was always going to be a controversial move. And look, there's another thing going on, you know, people... It, when you play a game for 10 years, it starts to feel like an old boot, you know, an old slipper. It's very, very comfortable. What's the, what's the adage for that? It gets very comfortable. People get used to it, and then they just mistake that for being good. Um, you know, you get Stockholm Syndrome. You don't properly analyze the situation that you're in. The, the daily system can definitely be way better. I always, one thing I do think was quite smart that they did was um, where it says special. I, I thought they'd do monthly, but they just say special. And what this means is, I mean, these all reset quarterly, essentially. But yeah, I don't really see the space for monthlies, but quarterlies are good. Um, so yeah. All right, all right, if we're not getting any ideas. Yeah, you can't pick which dailies to do, i.e., here's the real argument, oh, I have to put more effort into the game now. I have to spend more time because I have less choice in what I pick. I have to engage with the game more. There's a chance that, you know, I'll learn more about the game, I'll, I'll, I'll become more fanatical about the game, I'll spend more time with it, I'll end up spending more gems on it. All I wanted to do was log in for five minutes, alright? That's the real story here. Sorry if that's arrogant for me to say, but, I mean, that's basically it. People don't like to have to put in more effort than they currently do. Not just in games, just in life. Mercy... Herald is interesting because I could summon an elemental and keep proccing it. They've done some interesting things with the relics as well in terms of like how they ramp up or down. Like the defender rune, I think it's on here somewhere. They've nerfed, but in kind of a clever way. Whatever, I'm doing speed. Oh, we picked two of those, that was silly. So basically we'll run around nice and quick. And the thing is on a hammer build, if I'm taking hammer into PvE, um, oh no, not that. That's my muscle memory screwing me up there. 
Alright, there you go. Moon of Speed. And yeah, they get soul bound. We're going to be in kind of a crappy position for six months. Where our nice new clean inventories from the legendary armory are no longer nice and new and clean because they're going to be filled with relics at the bottom or whatever. But, uh, you know, we'll get there in the end. I kind of messed up a little. Oh, no, I didn't mess up. Um, just before this expansion came out, guys, here, um, I took all the characters on my account and bumped them to level 80 if they weren't already level 80, except the Let's Play characters. And I was thinking of filling these in as well, because these are three relics each for every level 80. You could have really cheesed it. And I mean, I, gen I genuinely have like 10,000 level ups, free level ups or something. So I could do it, but it would just be a lot of cl clicking. Um, so I do, in theory, actually have quite a few relics straight away. I could probably give Liz the full suite of core ones. But the inventory slots, it would be so many inventory slots. Oh. There's only eight vistas in the Horn of Maguma. How can we get 12? <clears throat> I don't know. I haven't done that. I haven't sorted that stuff out just yet. That sounds like a problem with a new system for sure. Um, we're one statuette away from being able to make another purchase. That kind of sucks. Right, let's start the story. Here we go. <clears throat> Long intro, but there it is. The commander finds themselves with no shortage of things they could do, but at the same time, they're not filling a pull towards any distinct purpose. We'll put the music back on. So we get a mail. Wow, why does this have so many mails? Oh, people joining the guild. Listen, guys, I'll run through these after this episode. That's what I'll do. He's not usually so formal. I hope everything's okay. Okay, so we get a message from Timey, um, who I guess is now the Asura representative, because when I was playing a Norn, I got pulled to Holbrack. Who messaged me? I think, was it Newt that messaged me? Anyway, so she says, apologies for the brusque message, but your presence is requested at the Applied Development Lab, our home instance. There's a very important development that would be better conveyed in person. I was already in town and figured it would be best to meet at your home. Please come at your earliest convenience. I've been curious about this on Asura because the whole Zodja influence on the expansion. I was very impressed with the Norn one, by the way. Um, the Norn intro, I kind of felt like a Norn. I talked about, you know, it was kind of heroic and I talked about partying to a little, little extent, you know. They clearly racially, I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but they clearly written it to be racially specific um and i remember as well the start of pof the devs were talking about how they had wanted to do like <clears throat> racial specific beginnings but hadn't managed to to get it but they've got it for this expansion i think that's really cool and it's nice to have a moment back at your home instance at the beginning of each expat now that we're in mini expats if they keep doing this it will actually start feeling like we go home on the regular which is cool and by that i mean one every year the one place i can count Everything in order. <clears throat> nice and tidy. Reddit has you so bummed you feel bad for the devs. TYWP for being positive. You shouldn't thank me for being positive and you shouldn't really, I don't know. I don't think you should purely just seek out positivity. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the Wizards Vault is a very good idea. Whether they fully pulled it off, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm just repeating myself here. I don't know. Is that what Reddit's complaining about or is Reddit whining about other stuff? Oh, I had to clean up another hairball while you were gone. I'd love to say that that's new dialogue, but it's not. I mean, we can collect our stuff, you know, our home instance. There's a really lovely person in um, the guild. And, you know, the guild's been pretty dead for, like, months because there's not really been any meaningful content. Um, well, it hasn't been dead dead, but, you know, it's nice to see people dropping messages. And this guy, as far as you can see, every single day in the Spud uh, guild um, offers people their home instance. Every day. I always think that's quite nice. I, I very rarely actually come back and harvest these things now. I don't think about it very much. It's just like, you know, I, I'd rather be in a fractal or in a strike mission or in a raid or in a tournament game, you know? Because um, they're all just so much gold. Actually, guys, I'm going to I'm gonna be uh, a little bit... Not a braggart, but I'm going to be confident in something about myself here for you all. I would say that right now I am the most PVX. I was saying this to Boots the other day. Um, I am the most PVX and like understanding of the full game's balance that I have ever been. Seriously, ever. And I'm not saying I'm at some new great height or anything, but uh, I've been regularly world versus welding and zerging in world versus world. I've not been doing GVG stuff, but I mean, really. Um, I, I do kind of get what people are doing in World vs. World and what feels strong and what doesn't. I've been playing shit tons of competitive. And I also, I was a huge PvP spree, um, PvE spree, doing strikes and, you know, playing with the Spuds. We did HDCM. 
I've been doing fractals and stuff. Fractals I haven't done for a little bit. But genuinely, there's not an area of the game that I'm not pretty clued in on about at the moment. And I'm fairly multi-class with all of it as well. So <clears throat> I was saying to Boots, we should definitely do some balance with Boots. Um, and hopefully it'll be a high quality one. It's a weird thing though with balance with Boots where it's like... Oh, how do I say this without being so arrogant and like horrible about it? You know, most people play one class in one area of the game and their understanding is so narrow. Narrow, It sort of doesn't matter if you're properly tuned in with the balance because there aren't many people there, <laughs> do you know what I mean? To even be able to like appreciate or care about that, you know? What they'll care about is that when I get to the dead eye section, they say the thing that really makes sense for their dead eye gameplay in the open world or in pvp or in raids you know and if it's if it's slightly off then and it's gonna be slightly off you know it's gonna be like people's experience of the balance is so personal and so hyper specific that i don't know like boots said to me at the same time he said oh you know I, there's certain areas i want to refresh myself on and i was sort of thinking it doesn't really matter <laughs> you know what people really want is just to talk about balance <clears throat> sorry what do you say Liz? champion of an elder dragon the talk of Tyria. Oh, yeah. In the flesh. Do I know you? Me Ray of the Cantha Report, International News Desk, seeing the sights and seeking stories from central Tyria. Got a minute to chat? Well, you've got one heck of a story, and the people deserve to hear it. I can probably <clears throat> spare a moment. Good. Walk with me. Talk with me. Didn't have a chance while you were still in Cantha. Big name like you probably has a thousand things to say, but let's start with this. Killing Suwon, saving the world, ending the reign of the Elder Dragons, a lot to cope with. Thoughts? Uh, I understand. That formal letter from Timey was written by her. She faked being Timey. <clears throat> in order to, uh, you know, get us here. When I played my Norn, my Norn character remarked on that, but I didn't really understand why. But it's very clear here. Um, and what what uh, what I think is interesting there as well is this expansion started with a deception straight away. A lie immediately. Somebody took a hold of our communication and, you know, the mailing system and used it to their advantage. And I think there's going to be more of that in Secrets of the Discord as it goes along. Uh, in chat, someone said, Monk Monka said, WP, oh no, no, not that one. That, well, we'll read that as well. I need to temper my response to a community that may not think play just like him. Get good is not a valid response to an actual critique of the new system. Well, what are you, when did I say get good? I don't even know what system you're talking about. What? The, the comment I wanted to, to read is, have I ever considered doing a podcast with Boots? You really like the visual wood one, but my chemistry with Boots is super fun too. Not really. The thing with podcasts, I mean, I think there's probably a way to do it, but, you know, what I really don't relish is that idea of oh you got to do it even if you have nothing to talk about and kind of trying to push through and and then it can get a bit whiny and i, I don't know we, we had a lot of experience with that i actually kind of really want to talk to matt because i've been playing epic amounts of Baldur's gate at the moment like crazy amounts i think i've got 70 hours in it which is quite a lot for me for a non guild Wars 2 game um and i'm like looking at steam and he he's going hard on that game he's been playing a lot of it i haven't said a word to him but i've seen him online so much he must be over 100 hours already i mean he wasn't like 40 hours in the first two days i'm serious um Okay, Killing Su Won, uh, Killing Su Won, Saving the World, Ending the Reign of the Elder Dragons, a lot to cope with thoughts. I like these little journalist moments in games. This makes me think of Mass Effect. Um, and we get the charming, um, dignity, ferocity comeback in a good way. Of course, the actual backline system isn't there. This isn't having a long-term impact on what kind of character we are. It's just a tiny bit of flavor as we interact. So it's not the whole hog, but it's something. Um, and we can also say, yeah, that mail I got, that was you, wasn't it? I skipped this on my Norn. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna do it here. Gilly has charged, I'm afraid. Sorry for the deception, but deadliness looms, and you're hard to pin down. I don't expect you to turn up, but now that you're here, I hope you'd consider the interview. Sure, can you repeat the question? Okay, yeah, because I wasn't sure if I'd miss one of these options if I clicked that. This is such a subtle, tricky thing about guiding people through the UI and conversations in games, and you've got to be so consistent with it from the off always for people not to have that kind of doubt. All right, um, my coffee's nearly gone. I'm already cracking into a Coke here. I'm actually uh, sitting here with an AC behind me to keep myself cool because it is so humid and hot in the UK at the moment. It's ridiculous. Um, 
the AC actually has been leaking and I keep trying to drain it, but it drains in a weird way and it keeps leaking and it's, I have a constant anxiety about it. Um, okay, so a lot to cope with ending the reign of the Elder Dragons. What do I want to say? I'm not going to role players list. I'm just going to say what I want to say. <clears throat> we can say a lot of people were involved in those events. Have you talked with them? This is kind of like the Cormir thing, you know? Like, the sort of casual view for the story of Nightfall is that Cormir sucks, but when you really look at the story, you realise she built an army to fight back against the Hells after she died, and she did all this shit off screen, and it's like, oh, you, you maybe did earn your godhood. Other people were involved. Um, or we could just say you say that as though there were a lot of other choices. Now, let's do this. Let's be dignified. If I could choose one of these for myself, dignity, I think that's a great virtue. <laughs> I don't particularly embody. Hmm, an interesting perspective. How do you respond to charges that your leadership, or lack thereof, was one of the chief reasons for the catastrophic events negatively impacted uh, Cantha? Uh, well, no, we were a fish out of water. We had no leadership. We had no power there. Uh, I've always tried to do the best I can. This is kind of weak. Very meek, isn't it? I've always acted with the best information available at the time. You weren't there. You can't understand the complexity of the situation. Yeah, let's be a bit aggressive here. I'm offended now. Clearly a touchy subject. Let's move on, shall we? Do you think the world is a better place without the Elder Dragons? Without the cycle we've known for countless generations? If we hadn't acted, we wouldn't be here having this conversation, so... I feel as though the lives we saved made it all worth it. Well, the cycle is in balance and the void pushed back. It says it all. Actually, I don't understand this bottom question here. This bottom response, sorry. Well, let's just say this. We, our backs were kind of the wall. We're being ferocious here today, I suppose. Good point. Let's talk about you for a moment. What's next for the Legendary Commander? Any future plans you'd like to divulge in exclusively for my audience? I'm kind of giving her a bit of a Rita Skeeter voice. That's what I'm trying to do here. Um, oh, we can be really rude. Any future plans? There's still much to do to make Tyria a better play. If this is meta commentary, you know... As I so often believe everything is, you know, what's our plans after the Elder Dragons? Well, we're going to make Tyria a better place. I'll find something. The Wizard's Tower. Now, uh, sorry, now that we've got the high-level questions answered, let's get to the meat of the matter. What my audience really wants to hear. The meat of the matter? Uh-huh. Scandal. Death. Romance. How's the volume, guys? Is it good? Details. There's not much more to it. We prevented widespread disaster a few times. Lost some friends along the way. But now that the dragon cycle is over, it's... peaceful. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pack Commander's retirement haunted by dreams of the past. The screams of war. I might not... Uh... Oh, gosh. This could be important. Do you mind? I think I got what I need. Just you wait. Your name will be painted on every chronicle in Tyria. Thank you, Commander. You can trust me to tell your story as authentically and accurately as possible. <clears throat> She's great, and I'm assuming by the end of this... Thank you, Timey. There'll be some cliffhanger or something. Maybe not a cliffhanger, but I'm assuming she'll come back at the end and we'll read the article she wrote. You know there was this idea of the Scooby-Doo mystery gang and, like, what might go on through most expansions? I like the idea that she is going to keep hounding off the steps of the journalist each mini X pack or something. Maybe it will slowly build. You know, she'll be... And that's kind of a season one vibe, you know, like where you had these recurring characters quite often. Did you guys notice when we got a mail there, it was the Lucky Fortune envelope? Did you guys see that? Now, I believe... Oh, never mind. It's because I'm repping it. Oh, I thought it was because it was going to be a mail from Cantha. That would have been really good, wouldn't it? Okay, it's from Timey. Hey, Commander! Sorry for, oh, I won't do the voice. Sorry for sending this antiquated note. But while I was working with Yao and June, communications became critically important to solving their power problems. See, look at this, okay? Well, one of the reasons I really, really didn't like the Giala Delve patch was because, you know, uh, this is supposed to be about uh, the Jade tech crisis. We, we see nothing of it, no fallout, and then apparently it's solved. Is it solved? But no, 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 look. They don't just drop all the story, as I was saying before. We're slowly rolling on with it. Um... Communications, they're still trying to solve their power pro- Oh, mind you, she uses past tense. Maybe this power problems are solved. The good news is, we made some serious upgrades to the comm system I developed. 
The bad news is I can't just patch the system. I have to roll this out to every user individually, and you won't be on the upgraded network until you get the update. Hence the mail. I've attached a one-time use service chip that will update to your comms uh, unit automatically. Once you perform the update, you won't need to do anything, but feel free to test it out. Everyone else should have theirs already. This tech is still experimental, so you may run into some glitches if you overextend the system. Timey. P.S. Ivan's been calling me every five minutes, complaining that he's had something important, yada, yada, yada. Maybe ask him what he needs so he stops bugging me while I'm trying to work. Okay, gotta go. Bye. And the fact that Ivan kind of kicks off this story here, I think is quite cool. So we get this upgraded device. It is something we have in our inventory. We get this tooltip telling us about it. I'm not sure, I didn't really think about this, but if I delete this, do I lose out? Is there an always time for timey type thing in this expansion where I need to keep calling people at every story juncture? Because I didn't do that last night. Let's hit deposit. Oh, see how satisfying that is, that whole row going away down there? So, uh, sorry, there was a little bit of information there. This uh, JTEC service chip will upgrade the user's comms device with timey's, timey's latest firmware. Welcome to Timey's Upgrade Common Networks, version 1.0. Please select a, a recipient for your call. Uh, call Timey. This is Timey. I'm not available to talk right now. You know, busy inventing novel technologies that change how we communicate. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. This is so cool. Oh, oh Timey. Oh, you guys do want the voices. All right, I'll do some of the voices. Okay, let's call Yao. Come in. Uh, is you? Yao? Can you... Sorry, if that's new. I, I can't stand anything saying. I'll call another time. Yao, still there? Must be down in the jade mine again. Um, <clears throat> okay, you guys are saying you've tried clicking it later and it no longer worked, so you don't anticipate and always time for time to do it. Okay, well, that, at least that means I won't forget it and actually accidentally miss that detail. You guys are talking a lot about the Wizard's Vault, eh? Yeah, there's this thing of freedom of choice. I don't know. You can be... The way that 14 does it, I think, is very clever. It's a roulette, okay? So you choose to go in the roulette, and what comes... What dungeon it rolls, or what alliance raid it rolls, or whatever, what raid it rolls, is random. You don't have choice in that game. But people don't complain about the fact you don't have choice. You know, they just queue into the format, and they play it. But the way that ArenaNet's done the Wizard's Vault kind of just makes you think, oh, well, I should have the choice. It, uh, uh, there's something about the presentation there, I think, that makes one look offensive and one less so. But also, you know, people are just going to bristle against change that impacts them in any mildly negative way. <clears throat> uh, call Rama. This is Detective Rama of... Oh. Brim and the Brim and Scarab Agency. Detective Agency. <laughs> the Brim and Scarab, I like Missing this. family heirloom? We can find it. Long lost parents? We'll track them down for you. State your inquiry, and we'll get right back to you at our earliest convenience. Have an efficient day. Uh, the problem with choice is that the choice is always the easiest and quickest one. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, that was a problem with the old daily system. And I don't think that their current setup with the vault has necessarily resolved that, especially in matters of PVX. I'm very disappointed to see what they did with the PVX side of it. Um, and yeah, you know, that's what the roulettes resolve as well. You might roll a really long dungeon. You might roll a really short dungeon. If there's a, a ludicrous outlier, you know, they can shave it or change the content slightly. A bit like we see with fractals, trying to keep the islands to a similar length. But overall, um, you know, you get what you get. You get what you're given. Let's call Bram. Bram, how are you? The individual you are trying to contact has yet to properly set up their messaging device. Please try again later. So, we're not really getting through to people here. Call Marjorie Casimir. This is Marjorie Dillon. Mm -mm. This is Marjorie and Casimir. No. Uh, tie me. This is Marjorie Delacroix of Delacroix Investigations. Me and my beautiful fiancé, Casimir Mead, Crichton Ambassador, are busy living the good life. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Maybe catch you at the bar. Oh, and if this is Gorick, stop signing my name on paperwork. <laughs> I like I'm this. This. This is like the invention of the telephone, you know, and like there's kind of like a warm nostalgia or, or, or a, the invention of an answer phone, I guess, at least, where you kind of get this sense of, um, 
people don't quite know how to do it. They don't know how often they need to be there to listen and actually respond. We could try to call Ritlock. Tammy's note says to press this button, then start talking. How do you do this? This flaming device. <laughs> So there you go. All right, and now we can call Ivan, and they put us into an emote. I think that uh, Casimir and Marjorie's one's a bit funnier than that. <laughs> Commander! Ah, darn it. Hey, give me a moment. Sorry about that. Gorik decided to bring an entire colony of mantid diggers aboard Ivan's ship. See so, you know, that? We're hearing about mantids and canther. That's very coherent and good. Keep killing them! I hope things are less <laughs> chaotic where you are. If you're bored, Ivan has a job. We would do it, but we've got our hands full. Bored? <laughs> you have no idea. When you've gotten word about some puzzling occurrences happening around the town of Garenhoff in Kessex Hills, no real details, but one witness stated that the heart of the town has disappeared. Can you look into it? Yes, please. I could use the busy work. Everyone is... Garrick! Put her down! <laughs> the cat. Sorry, Commander. Ivan needs to run. I think someone is about to stage a mutiny. We'll talk soon! Now, I must be honest, I don't remember... See? Everyone's doing just fine, Aureen. Was Sparky my Trin's cat? Was it a cat from the my Trin's apartment or something? Do I know my Trin before? Um, my Trin. Do I know the cat before now? So I can't really remember that cat from End of Dragons. I'm assuming it was already there. Statistically speaking, <laughs> and it's just slipped my mind. Rare. And yeah, you you guys assume that the emote plays is just the last one you click. That's probably right. Yeah. I just, for me, it was it was always going to be a question of going through and exploring every option. She had a ton of cats, was it that she had loads and loads of them? Oh, the cat was called Horik, you're right. Yeah, I thought my train cat, there, I felt like there was some connection there. What, they've adopted it? Or was Sparky from somewhere else? But if there's one place I can rely on you guys to outlaw me and, you know, give me the deets, it's gonna be the cat law. Oh, I know of a good use for this. I wonder if I could ask chat right now, okay, how many cats can you collect for your home instance? Does anyone know the number off the top of that? No, no one's going to know that. No one's going to know that. Do you remember years ago I did that Guild Wars Mastermind video? It was already kind of like at that point, I was like, wow, rare. you could ask some ludicrous stuff. You could ask like who the, who tournament PvP winners were from Guild Wars 1, right? You could ask crazy shit that just no one's going to remember or be able to answer. That was already true years ago. Nowadays... With all this extra stuff, uh, it's just crazy. Do you know what? I would really like to get more glyphs of um, reaping, are they called? AoE? Yeah, reaping. If I could have a reaping glyph in every single one of my uh, tools, that would be pretty amazing. 50 cats, 35, got to be at least two. Yeah, those just look like guesses to me. Statistically speaking, this I wonder, is they must have rare. put something new from uh, the home instance in... Uh, this expansion right surely maybe even two things actually so far i don't believe i've seen any like new nodes to harvest or gather from so who knows all right look, we're done with this this is, we've spent enough time here the one thing that is nice is the bandit chest in pvp if you guys look at my bank here in pvp i've been doing the um the silver waste reward track because it gives you sand and according to fast farming guild wars 2.com or whatever it's the, it's the most money so when i beat the reward track you get a, a fossil so i've just been stacking fossils up I, I i don't even know how many reward tracks this represents now just so many of these goddamn fossils they're useless to me but on the other hand it's when you open the sand you get keys and you get geodes and things and these are just building. Look at this. I got 20. I haven't even been to Dry Top. Seriously. I have 27,000 geodes now. I have over 1,000 lockpicks. 460 bandit keys. For years, when I would come to my own instance, I wouldn't have the, like, key to open the little bandit box here now. I'm, I'm sorted now. Probably for the rest of my time playing this game. Oh, and that's a good point. Do they have a new reward track for the new expansion? Look, I'm about to finish it again. Seriously. And I've got a little tip for you guys as well, alright? When you get the sand, craft it at a jeweler into glass. 
you know, Minecraft style. And glass is only used to make, like, tankards in the guild hall or something. It's used for, like, fuck all. Uh, it's one of those things I'd like to see the devs do more with one day. But the glass sells for more on the TP, so... Actually, a little bit of a TP thing here. What am I looking for at the moment? Oh, yeah, robot tracks. We just scroll down. No, it doesn't look like they did one. Oh, that's disappointing. There's a lot of things here that I've seen, and I'm like, oh, they did that. That's cool, like adventures and stuff. It looks like they didn't do a reward track. Oh, well. Okay, so um, so what do we want to do? We want to make our way to Garenhof in Keswick Seals. So this isn't going to be too special or exciting because we've already played the interlude. We've already seen... Well, we already came here after the interlude, and we've seen that the, the tower's missing. We already spoke to all of these NPCs. Oh, there is a reward track, Secret of the Obscure. Oh, okay. Oh, is it just World vs. World? There's one in World vs. World, at least. Well, that's something we can look at as we go along, you know. I'd, I'd really like to get into... There's a good opening story instance here I'd like to do in this first part, so let's not dilly-dally for too long. Gone. Whenever the baby wakes me up, I take her for a walk around the block. Usually does the trick. And when we rounded the corner, I realized that the tower wasn't obscuring the moon. It always does that time of night. It was just gone. It was there when I walked home from the market. It was there before we went to bed. Now, it's gone. Did you smell anything weird? See anything? No, nothing like that. It just... left. I think it left us. <clears throat> So this is quite clever, I think. I believe this is just the ambient dialogue. I just realized I can use the color dropper. Oh no, I can't. That didn't work. I would have thought if black cherry is what I have down here, surely black cherry would work up here as well. That's my hair. Which, which channel even is it? It's this channel. I mean, let's just do that. Probably fits a bit better. Um... I believe that's just the ambient dialogue that normally triggers. It's a shame that you, I can't press F on April here. That I think we got before, but now they've actually integrated it into the story step. Um, either that or I'm just remembering this from last night. But I think this was here a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? How do you do? Hello. Uh, welcome to Garenhof, the former home of Isgarren's Castle. If you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But right now, we're all a bit lost. I'm investigating what happened. What can you tell me? Are you blind? The wizard's tower's gone! Uh, I'm sorry, we're all short-tempered right now. The town's suffering a tragic... Oh, we've got to do a voice. The town is suffering a tragic loss. And the mayor is, well, you. not very youthful at the moment. Okay, I'll keep looking around, thank you. Decided to go with a, a bit of a lisp on a, on a valley girl there. Because that's everyone's <laughs> favourite voice, right? Happened? Is this Garn okay? Oh god, that guy's the bunny know. head. It feels wrong without it. I don't feel... ...ready. Is that weird? I know what you mean. That's those guys. Here's the mayor, I believe. I can't comfort them. I can barely keep myself from panic. Yeah, there's the mayor and then the guard, the one guard. How am I supposed to protect this town now? It's just me. What did we do to drive the tower away? I'm looking into the situation. What can you tell me? We don't know much, only that the tower disappeared and the townspeople are lost without it. Mayor Marion and I are doing our best to keep people calm, but it won't be long before unrest sets in. Alright, thanks for the info. So there we go. <clears throat> you know, I'm getting tired of people pretending to know the wizard. There are no tours, we've never met Isgarin, he's... Oh, I apologize, I... Don't even know if he's oh yeah, I gotta get used to that. Is is Garin? So little, and yet we speak as if we know these things. We act familiar. We know nothing, and now it's gone. Honestly, guys, in chat, did you think it was is Garin the whole time, or is Garin? I know that if you've been watching my videos, I might have influenced you unduly. I guess the double R, it should always have been obvious it was is Garin, you know, because it's not one R. One R would be Gar. I don't know. These things are always inconsistent, but still, um, we have a I still can't get used to that. I swore it was empty. I didn't think. Maybe you'll learn something. 
It was all a lie. I feel so ashamed. The people of this town, they'll never trust me again. I'm looking for, into the situation. What's happened? The wizard's tower, which used to be high, um, hang high over the town and watched over us, has just disappeared. None of us know what happened to it, and now the townspeople are terrified. Well, did you see anything that could be related to the disappearance? I don't... Well, now that you mention it, there was a group of sketchy individuals who showed up right after, but they couldn't have. I mean, it seems implausible to think they were involved. Perhaps, but what can you tell me about the group? They were watching some of the more vulnerable residents in the town, those who were especially impacted by the tower's disappearance. I'll show you where they live. They might be able to tell you more. Thank you, I'll go speak with them. So, uh, these sketchy individuals at least seem to be interested in the townspeople. So maybe they're not that sketchy. Here's a terrified villager. Who, I think we just missed a bit of dialogue, basically, but she's... She's going nuts. The other guy will have procced it. It'll be one of those... Where did it go? Rare non-phase things. It's always been there, watching. Bad news. The villager wasn't in their right mind and attacked... Wait, what? Yeah, okay. By the six, you have my serious... You have my sincerest apologies. Oh, because we got attacked, I see. I was thinking to feel bad for him because he's just suffered a loss of a member of his town. I hope you showed mercy. The people here have lost so much. They seem disoriented. Is there anything else you can tell me? Lasha said she saw a few of them lingering outside the house on the cliff overlooking the dock. That place has been abandoned for some time, though. I'm not sure it's much of a lead. Guess it's worth a look, just to be certain. Oh, man. Wait, guys, when I was in um, France a few weeks ago, uh, or a month and a bit ago, uh, two months... <laughs> um, I was in this village that was just so small. It was like out of a different time. It was just out of a whole other era. You know, like, everyone knew each other. You know, the mayor lived around the corner. You know, a bunch of people own, own all the property there so they can run around with their dogs running across the roads and nobody can really say anything. This really, really crazy small village vibe like I've never really had an experience of before. It was like something that I would imagine out of, like, the early 1900s, not still going on IRL to this day. And I kind of, Garenhoff now, I like to think, has a little culture like like, like that, you know. Alright, we look for the house where the sketchy individuals were last seen. Now, I was really excited on this, that it could have been the Asura house with all the devices in the uh, attic. And indeed it is, you'll see here. But you don't actually interact with them. Um, you can explore the house and, inter and, you know, look at other stuff, but that big thing, that point of intrigue and mystery for years, you don't do anything with it. But here, there's a still. This appears to be a still, and from the smell of the liquid inside, likely used recently to heat a concoction of herbal rem remedies. There are small leaves at the bottom of the mixture. Outside of its placement, it doesn't appear suspicious. There's a dagger dug into the table here. This dagger, forcefully driven into the table, looks to be of dwarven origin. The smith work is exquisite, though the blade is driven so deep it would take immense effort to extract it from the table. Whoever left this must have been angry or in a hurry. So, Delgemore steel there. Which, again, is kind of nice. It sort of makes you think, you know, about a part of the story that you don't usually think about and the world and the kind of materials people use. It turns out that's actually a hint for something greater, I think. Um, this spill is wet. Indicating it happened within the last few hours, but it appears to be an ordinary stove oil. Nothing stands out or gives any clue about the situation. So we know that these guys were around very recently. How do you do? There's a bundle of notes here. Mongoose. The situation is grim and growing more dire by the moment. Our predictions were for below for what we've been seeing for the readings of the astral fluctuations. Priorities have changed. I need you to relocate immediately. This note says that their group is headed somewhere near the Cornucopian Fields. I could start the windmill and look west. Yeah, last time I interacted with this, I didn't have time either. Let's see if it pops again. Yeah, it does. I need you to relocate immediately. Take your team to the region southwest of the Cornucopian Fields. Trust only yourselves. We will get through this. Dash F. So who is F? And then, um, and of course, Dash F makes me think of Dash E. I mean, we're just one line away from it. So is this society the kind of people that E is from, you know? That's what I was thinking yesterday. And yeah, they talked about some astral thing, stuff we don't really understand. But yeah, so you interact with the table, you don't actually come up here. But I guess that by putting all this stuff in this room, ArenaNet are essentially saying, hey, this stuff's related. So we go to Gendaren. Cornucopian Fields obviously is right near the start of Lines Arch. It's E's son. Yeah, because it's just one left less, you know. You always love this music, you miss Guildhall's one. Yeah, I really like this music as well. This still, to this day, gets me nostalgic for pre-searing. I must have heard this how many times? Over how many years? Um, in a completely different context, but it still makes me think of pre. 
I still think like a remaster or something of Guild Wars 1 would be really cool. Oh, uh, there's something I kind of want to do for this expansion as well. Listen, I, I just want to ask for some advice. If any of you guys have played with Reshade or post-processing suites in the past year to six months, please drop me a message because as far as I can tell, there's a bunch of new shaders and developments and new things have happened that potentially could make the game look really good. And it might be, you know, I didn't do it with End of Dragons. It might be really nice to try and bump the game up a bit more and uh, start running that stuff again. So uh, let me know. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is funny. This is overlapping with the Scarlet event. That's that's really crazy. Moon camp is coping with another casualty this morning. Arena's worried. Two near Salma yesterday, too. That's what, six this week? Wait, someone's coming. God damn. This is especially weird. You know, it's funny because don't awakened invasions also... Oh, I thought it was an air there. Don't awakened invasions also occur on this map? You guys have got to remember, this, this story is going to have a lot about rifts, right? And we already have, like, these awakened incursions that are happening for however many years now and will continue to as, like, rifts that pop up in some of these maps. Not to mention the current event stuff where there were rifts already. And I know a lot of people have been wondering in this expansion, like, do ArenaNet remember those events? Because this is oddly similar to them and so on. And I'm just going to say they do. You know, everything I complimented at the start, where it feels like they're very coherent and they really sat down and thought and know the setting, that's all extremely true. So we will see. I'm going to kill this. This is not a part of the expansion, but I don't want the combat music and stuff playing like mad. I actually took huge damage there. That's crazy. Let's try and break the bar. Do I have my air filled up? Yes, I do. So that's a dazing strike. I could have summoned the air elemental there and done a bit more break bar damage. Yeah, we can use air four to uh, earth four to block that. Here we go. And let's just linger for a second to get our five as well. Oh, we didn't need it in the end. Yeah, when I did this yesterday, it was very quiet. There you go, daily portal closer. <laughs> a thousand storms. I wonder if that is benefiting the story of the expansion or or not. Okay, so sketchy people. Well, when we look at them, we'll see what about them. They're not really in... I mean, these are new armors, aren't they? Aren't they the new armors? They got furs on them, so wherever they're from, we'll spend their time is quite cold. I saw an icon on one of them a second ago. I think this is new stuff. Yeah, like this. This eye on this guy's chest. Maybe another one on his belt. Maybe the clasps on these leather pouches and things. So who are these people? I need you to move along. You're not supposed to be here. I'm not. It's just I haven't seen your lot around here before. Yeah, it's the Rift Hunter armor. There you go. Thank you. Hello. Move along. It's not particularly flashy. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys. Do you guys know who did the music for this x pack Is it McLean again? There's the power. Did they talk at all about any of that? Is, is that news out there? Because the new, the music in this one, it feels very Guild Wars, but not particularly, oh, like, in you know, in your face. Maybe I haven't heard very much of it just yet. Okay, so we're going to use the device now to ring and say, okay, there's some weird guys. They don't want to talk to us. I, I can't even see it. I swear this is a clean inventory. It is a clean inventory. And that's how amazing it's I clean because all I ever have to do is type into the There's filters. The power. It is McLean, but it's not exclusively McLean. Okay. Welcome to Timey's upgraded. Yeah. Ivan is busy right now, and can. Oh, I think there was a typo there, wasn't there? Didn't it say upgrade one? instead of upgraded? I should wait until dark. See if I can sneak in. Okay, so we wait for dark at this new tower. Now, again, do you guys know? Is this new? Was this always here on the edge? I mean, this is clearly char architecture. I feel like this wasn't always here. But maybe I'm wrong. Oh my god, I cannot get out of combat. Why are there like a thousand Armor spiders hands. everywhere? I know we clipped him with the Hammer 3 there, but fucking hell. Alright, so we come on up. And we get an instance. Now this is this is a very long instance here. This is a huge sequence of event. This is uh, like three instances in a row, actually. Really, it feels like. And um, we're gonna see some cool stuff. So we enter. 
You don't remember it? That part confused you as well? You think it was there? Yeah, I can't tell if it was there. Being able to press F on the door and go up and down definitely Better. wasn't there. Should be dark enough that I won't be spotted unless I get close. Okay, so I was really... Alright, it looks clear for me to... Oh, and somebody screamed. A blood-curdling scream. Um... So, uh, I was really impressed with this. They make it properly dark, don't they? This is what nighttime interior should look like to me. Now, I know it's too much, and people's monitors are calibrated differently, and... Blah, 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 blah. But still, I I'm really happy they did it, at least for this instance. This is a cool day-night cycle. This is dark. If I was running a post-processor suite on this to make it darker than it should be normally, <laughs> I bet you wouldn't be able to see a goddamn thing. But this feels really good. So, investigate the commotion. And there are horrific creatures over there. So, these are new enemies. Obviously... You're going to see similar animations, you know, they're the same skeletons or whatever. But, um, yeah, I think they were really, really well made. Now, it, it, even for me, and I've been avoiding a lot of the pre-release press stuff, uh, these are called the Cryptis, okay? So, An ocean trench. it's not really a spoiler. I mean, technically, the commander doesn't know that yet. But, yeah, and I'm, I'm very happy with Something's the Cryptis designs. I think these are way better than the Void designs were for End of Dragons. I think they nailed it, really. I think these look really, really cool. And there's a lot of varieties of them as well. A big part of that whole, like, new adventure feel for me is new things to fight. The one thing I haven't really done yet is look at damage taken and see the kind of ability names they have. I really should have put Archon with the, uh, the scrolling combat text. I would love to see, like, interesting icons. Looks like they have Corrupted Slash and Cruel Rampage. There's also Battering Charge there. You know, it's just extra flavor, isn't it? when you get to see the names of the skills and stuff. So back over to the camp. We are approaching cautiously. I didn't really do this yesterday. Someone else was the instance owner. So we've entered a restricted area that's off limits to you. Guards will kick you out if you're spotted, as represented by the vision cones in front of them. You can gain suspicion if you loiter for too long. So this is our suspicion bar. I'd like to see this little mechanic even in the open world. Norn, talking to another of her group. I should hide in those dense bushes and listen in. Um, which I guess is kind of what they did with Echovald, right? The two hearts in Echovald. Which, by the way, I only recently just went back to to get all the achievement points from there. There's a few achievements I didn't do from the Season 1 re-implementation that I need, like, a group for. Like, six minutes to nightfall. Um, I know we're loitering. It's probably not the smartest moment. But here, uh... Oh my god, we have to scroll a lot. Here, the Battle for Lion's Arch. See, there's 20 AP I can get for doing this, for killing the knights. But it's really hard, because people who do the Battle for Lion's Arch are on, you know, unoptimized builds. So, you know, being a challenge. So, this might be something we do together here on these videos. <laughs> you know, we'll get a group of us together and with good builds, and we'll grab it. And you guys might need the achievement as well. Move out. As soon as I see your signal, I'll rally the rest of the camp. Yes, ma'am. We'll be right behind you. Stay swift, be brave. Better guarded than I thought. I'll find a more discreet way in. You know, I kind of... I like the weird vibe we get here. You know, the commander did all this incredible, crazy, world-ending shit. Um, <clears throat> gets their happy ending, and how do they choose to spend their happy ending? Sneaking around in bushes, spying on randoms. <laughs> I mean, that is what this is, right? I like how the icon for stop hiding is a guy waving. It's very extra. All right, so there's a paper here, but there's a sight cone. What's that? Shh. Astral Ward. They must be new to Tyria. How am I supposed to read and this? this? Arena is their leader. How am I supposed? Has to be that grouchy Norn. How am I supposed to read this with the risk of him turning around and the commander? Oh, I guess I just took the paper, so I can hide in a bush. Outsider, sorry, Outrider Arena. Your father has asked me to give you additional details as the leader of this mission, as it's not simply a matter of containing the threat, as you so often have done. In this circumstance, um, there is evidence to suggest that our enemy has targeted a powerful individual interior. So who's the enemy? Who's the individual? Is it us? 
You have read previous reports on this person and their pivotal role in recent events surrounding the ending of the Dragon Cycle. Yeah, it's us. In fact, on two prior occasions, your father and myself both petitioned the Wizard's Court to recruit them into the Astral Ward, but we were denied. With the boldness with which our enemy has stepped up their attacks, it's not only likely but probable that you may encounter the individual on your mission. If this happens, do not interfere or even interact with them. And that's true, we're already getting around in their face. They are to be handled with the utmost respect, but it is not your place to involve this individual in our affairs. That may yet change, but for now, maintain the edict. Remain safe, remain vigilant, M. So again, we have this method of tagging our, our names with one letter. Um, okay, already assigned to see... Uh, Alright, one of the things that I'm also impressed about with this expansion is for years, even since like 2008, since Eye of the North release, after the movement of the world and all that stuff, What's Guild Wars been about? Dragons, 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 dragons. Just constantly about the dragons. And now we're in this weird place where it's like, oh, okay, we want to move on from the dragons. We have to write all this story about other stuff that's important. Well, that's really difficult to do. We've stopped hiding, so I'm going to start hiding. That's really difficult to do. If you're going to tell me there's like this whole secret society and all this other stuff, the natural question you're going to ask is, well, why the fuck haven't they done anything before? Why are we only just hearing this now? And you know, if that isn't answered satisfactorily, this whole thing comes across very tacky. And to be honest with you guys, I was always willing to suspend my disbelief on this matter. I was always willing to sort of side with the studio and sort of just be like, you know what? Sometimes stories come across a bit tacky when they're long form like this. You know, it's not exclusive to games. You watch any kind of anime or whatever. I just finished My Hero Academia, which kind of doesn't do this in a way. But anything that's, you know, it just keeps going because we've got to keep make, making money from it. You're going to get to this point where it's like, well, why, why hasn't this come up before? That question, why hasn't this come up before if it wasn't originally planned out? And it's hard to justify that sometimes. I wasn't expecting Guild Wars to justify it very well. I was expecting them to be a bit hand wavy about it. But this is something, this expansion is really important me with they they really let you the game really lets you grill that question they let you ask over and over and over again and they provide answers over or attempt to provide answers over and over and over again why why didn't we know about this before how is this possible and they're not scared to shy away from that and they've really impressed me with that and you're already seeing it a bit here already we get a bit of an answer okay this society some of them have wanted to get us involved but they've been denied well why have they been denied well we'll look for answers to that as well as we go forwards you know, and we're only two seconds into the goddamn expansion here, and they're already, you know... You can see they're cognizant of this issue. A few scraps of discarded armor. Might be able to use these to look the part. At least from a distance. Sorry, it might be a bit boring talking about all this shit. Uh, you rummage through the crates quickly and find there are a few scraps of armor. Not enough for a complete set, but maybe enough to cobble something together. Put the armor scraps on to disguise yourself. Okay. I didn't do that before. I guess we look different now. Oh, yeah, yeah, look, we got this hat now. I really like this hat. Is this also acquirable in the expansion? Because it's cool as all hell. Oh, yeah, I have the Primordus hammer. That's why my Hammer 3s look like this. It's so good, isn't it? I Actually, I said this in Discord the other day. I feel like the Aureen one actually looks a bit better. But, hey, Primordus fanboy and all that. <clears throat> oh, there's a Cyclone. I might be able to use that to get them to tell me something. Okay, hello. We've been waiting for hours. I just wish we'd get the signal already. And I'm, I could sigh and say, oh, we've been waiting around for too long. But do the sight cones even matter now that I'm disguised? I assume they don't. Um, could you use a good fight? Ten should we just be straight up? Do you know what we're waiting for? Arena sent a group ahead to check out the astral fluctuations. Not sure where the next one's going to pop, but we need to be ready to start the hunt when it does. Okay, something about astral fluctuations. Not really supposed to understand what's going on. More dense bushes for eavesdropping. The infestation is pretty gnarly up north. Isolated villages, not a lot of foot traffic. They got their hands tied. Okay. It's good to hear Tengu as well. They have that weird effect on the Tengu voices. i got to be honest, guys, I really don't like it. They sound like robots or something. It just sounds like gross distortion. Am I wrong or am I wrong? <clears throat> Something about an infestation. Let's just get out of this bush. There's a scroll over there. 
The hunting party leaves soon, by the way. I've dawdled for too long, so we're probably going to miss a bit of info here. Astral Ward, the time we have feared for generations has arrived. The day has come to fulfill the noble purpose for which our benefactors have assembled and trained us. You are the bulwark against the menace of our enemy. Your bravery, and if necessary, your sacrifice, may, uh, may not be recorded in the history of our world, but know that your siblings in the Astral Ward and the honoured rulers of the court will hold your actions in the highest regard. Outrider Arena will see you to the glory of our victory against the enemy. Trust in her, for she has the trust of the court. Hold the line, hunters, the warden, Frode. Now, remember we had a guy who was tagged Dash F? Well, we now know that person's name, Frode. Frode is a big character. Let's listen to this. Help me gather some loot for Narcisse. She's got that farmer knocked out cold. Poor thing. I can't imagine what he's being forced to see. So some farmer in distress. Another character, Narcisse. To be honest, I'm not sure who Narcisse is. I don't remember from my limited time playing yesterday. Alright, we could ask this person maybe real quick. Who are you? Toughen up, on your feet. Sorry, who are you? Do you report to Arena? Oh... Okay, something weird has happened here. All right, I am so slow. <laughs> this, oh, there you go, they're moving. I was gonna say, I was gonna say that 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 timeout, I guess, was meant to be you fail if you don't do it in this time. But Guild Wars never really lets you fail, so uh, we could just keep doing stuff. But no, they're moving on. Let's hide in the bush. Time, my friends. I need you to channel my bond's determination and Dagda's strength. Remember. While we fight off the cryptus from below, our allies are working to seal the rifts from above. We have a hunt to complete. With me! And what are we hunting? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. They seem to have really changed the Tangu voices recently. Before they had like that honorable samurai kind of, you know, East Asian lilt. And now I, I guess they don't want to do that. Maybe they think it's tokenist or something. I don't know. I thought it was fine. I really liked their old voices. Loved them. Their voices were actually one of the reasons I thought they were so badass when we moved to Guild Wars 2. You know? Because their designs aren't too incredible. I mean, the End of Dragons ones definitely are. Visually. Whatever you do, don't listen to them! No! So, the Astral Ward Protector runs away. We get a giant rift. And we get attacked by the champion winged demon? No. Question mark? Rage at maximum. It. You know who I am? Yeah, so they call us the commander. And we know from that note a second ago that they they do know who we are and they, they want us to not be here. Why do they not want us near this? They know how powerful we are, in theory, if they know who the commander Armor is. And yet they don't want us near it anyway. Why are they hiding things from us? Oh, that was a really good dodge. <laughs> The big Harpy terror. dodge. I actually dodged it as well, because usually Harpies counter-attack with big damage there. I didn't get any evades, but hey. But yeah, there's a lot of varieties of these things, which I like. And now the Rift I is going mad. Get... Okay, so remember this whole thing about asset reuse? Well, what do you think about this? Where am I? You don't belong here, do you? Okay, I get it. It feels a little bit Echo Valdi, right? It feels like, okay, we're not blue Echo Valdi, we're red Echo Valdi. But I mean, come on, you got to throw them the bone on some level. All these tendrils and things are new, the blood effects. I, I, this really blew my mind yesterday. I was like, oh my god, this is a good intro. Actually, do you know what I thought? Honestly, I thought instead of any trailers or screenshots um, that they had done showing, you know, like the floating Garenhof with the reconfigured assets we've already seen, I thought, do you know what? They should have literally just, for the press for this, I would have been uh, super on board instantly if they had just done this, you know? You know, maybe a character that was less obnoxious. Just that. And I would have been like, oh, what the fuck is this? This is crazy. So, yeah, where are we now? We're in what's called a hostile environment. We have this effect on us, nauseated. The strange aura in this place is sickening. We feel weak, nauseated, unable to move quickly. And this is very exciting. This doesn't really feel like the fissure of woe or anything from Guild Wars 1. But we're clearly in some messed up place. 
And I was I was well on board as soon as I saw this. We're, we're basically in oblivion, right? We're in a Daedric realm or something. So dead guys wearing the same armor we saw before. <clears throat> they remind us that you can glide. And look at this arena. We were saying last night, surely this is going to be a strike mission arena or something. I mean, look at this. Look at how cool. And I love, like, the uh, the color of the, the, the goop as it's, like, white as it goes up there as well. So let's glide across. I do not have a good glider equipped, apparently. Sort that out. So if you can't hear it very well, on the bottom left, it's printing the dialogue. Him. Who are you? Your mind is perplexing. Your thoughts are pungent. Where have you been? What is this place? My home. Tell me, flickering soul. What are you? I haven't tasted such depth in a long, long while. Don't take another step. Mm. I do like it when my prey is determined. Okay, there's a lot of things I'd like to talk about. Yeah, I don't know why the ground is bumpy and I'm floating. I guess some kind of mechanic when we fight here later. That effect there, that's one of the new runes, by the way. People have been using in PvP. Yeah, hulking creature. It looks like Deimos, doesn't it? Now, there was... There was... I guess that answers one of my questions. There was a bit of discussion... About, like, if Deimos was in this, I was thinking more Menzies or whatever. But, I mean, it, I don't know whether it explicitly is Deimos. We'll, we'll have to play it along. But it looks like Deimos with wings or something, doesn't it? Or some, uh, some kind of creature similar, at the very least. Rage I love this maximum. effect where I'm taking the damage and getting Condit. It's just enough you? to be really brutal and frustrating, you know? A savant of grief. If you notice, by the way, they've changed our endurance bar to have just the one dodge. Um, I think we're supposed to be getting battered and punished here. I don't know with correct skill usage if I'll be fine. I didn't exactly set a build up. So we get downed. I think we're meant to get downed here. I can keep procking my signet by spamming buttons. <laughs> Save me, Elemental. Save me. Yes. Okay, and now there's another voice. Is that his name? Say it louder. So we hear... We hear this other person who tells us his name is Serus. I don't know if I... Oh, I should have dodged. I actually would have been fine if I dodged, because that was a big heal I was getting. So he gets me down. The gameplay here is really weird. It maybe lingers a little bit too long, like the whole healing up well thing. Or being forced to get down. Also, yeah, I love the way he walks into you us. Very adamant. Jesus Christ. could say the same about you. If I'm near Sarah's. him, I can proc a bigger heal on the floor. My name. I grow bored of this. Okay, maybe we were supposed to be fighting him. Maybe that was a thing. A brilliant the realm of dreams hungers for your soul. The realm of dreams. What is the realm of dreams? We can we can hit the floor. What? Now, when we are, um, when you're playing that in a party, the other allies are like wisps, they're moats. Uh, they just get to watch, and you know, they have poison on the body, so that when you try to rally yourself, it's very slow. Again, the music there, though, is very understate. Maybe I should have turned it up a bit, so we could hear the, uh, the expansion music a bit better. Because I think this is a new track, but you know, it's very similar to the previous ones. Um, but yeah, so we get that crazy thing, and then another thing's in our void, in our head. We hear about the Realm of Dreams. Which could be like a Lissa God realm, I don't really know for sure, but I'll throw it out there, dreams. Um, I would be neither like super keen to see that, nor not super keen to see that. And so we gotta, we gotta move. 
And, oh, yeah, and in the bottom left, we're actually being whispered by the second voice, the second strange voice. Get up, move. And the second sa voice kind of saved us there because it taught us his name, and by saying his name, um, you know, that in some way hurts him or whatever. Okay, so... So we can only stagger forwards. He's supposed to be here. Yeah, there he is. You see this weird thing on the floor here? That is actually a creature that we saw in Abaddon's vault in Siren's Landing. They were a couple of enemies you only fight just there years ago at the end of season three. And that's quite curious. Oh, I, so I need to hide and let him move back through. Probably. My endurance is coming back so slow. I mean, look at that. All right. He goes all the way over there. I'm tired of this chase. Timey? This is a good little sequence, right? It's generally quite intimidating. I don't really know what he does when he catches you. That's always the thing with Guild Wars again, because you can't really fail, but... Curious little thing. So the, these creatures speaking to us, he thought we were curious and weird, and he'd never experienced something like that for ages. Also, he thought that someone else was in us or something, and even this second voice really likes us as well, or thinks we're curious. So, and I think it's fair to assume they're both demons. I mean, I'm assuming they both are. And here we go. This is a animated loading screen which is quite clever. And they use this to transition into the opening cutscene um, immediately after loading screen in a good way. Here, we're no longer in the loading screen. After you saw that flicker. Alchemy, it worked! Take a deep breath. Count to three and think of your fondest memory. Traveling through the mists can be taxing on the mind. They've got experience with this kind of thing. You'll pull through, huh? Hi there, Commander. Been a while. Oh, I missed a whole beat. You see how she's called Not Timey there? It's because we hear that voice and you're assuming it's Timey, but it's How's not. It's Soldier. They're fine. They're fine. Little rift lagged is all. Rift lagged? And... Zoja? What are you doing here? We'll give you the full breakdown once things settle. Mabon, you gonna look for the other wizards? Wizards? Wait, who are you? Cool your blood, Commander. Mabon is one of us. Yes, I'll meet you outside. Be safe. Soja, you're here? Oh, sharp as always, Commander. All right, you two, with me. Can't slow down. Yeah, slow down. I've got to talk to people. I really hope if I don't touch W, S, and D, it doesn't proc or move. <laughs> Please. Yeah, there's so many mind blows here. This is a good opener. You, when I was, okay, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I was in the demon corridor last night, and then the communicator started going, and I heard that female Asura voice, I thought, oh, timey? It's kind of a killjoy. Like, this is a really scary, like, creepy, badass environment. And when I hear timey's voice... It just takes me to like a place of whimsy and, and lightheartedness and and maybe that works like oh it's a beacon of hope and it snaps us out of our fear or something maybe that but when I experienced it yesterday I, I just sort of thought oh, timey is not who I want to be hearing in this scene let me be scared let me experience something metal let me experience something you know cool and creepy and I thought fuck man and now it was like timey was cramping the scene style when I heard the familiar voice and then you go through and you realize, ah, actually, no, it's not even timey at all. What they've done is it's a cool little trick. You know, for years, timey replaced Zoja in the story. And you hear that voice and then, oh, wow, it's not timey. It's fucking Zoja. Zoja is who was speaking to us. I think that's a really fun way to bring Zoja back to the story, to immediately, like, just nod at this, this situation we've been in where one Asura swapped for the other for so long. And yeah, so Zoja's here. And that's one mind blow. The other is, yes, then we're looking at a goddamn Massar. All right, so for people who are out of the loop, maybe watch... I would hope people are watching this way down the line. Um, in the press for this expansion, there was a screenshot of, like, a bunch of key characters. And we were doing a lot of speculation about them. Like, whose is Garen? 
is this a seer? Is this some new species? Whatever. And we were talking about the seers a lot. Okay, first of all. The seers, 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 seers. And I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be? And there's literally, you can hear me in the commentary. I'm saying in that video, like, it would be amazing if there was a seer in this storyline. We haven't seen the seers at all in Guild Wars 2. We barely saw them in Guild Wars 1. Wow, that would be some amazing lore. And so immediately from that, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, this this could be an expansion about the seers. They won't do the Massart. You know, people love the Massart as well, but let's let's be real. The Massart was a part of Guild Wars 1 story. When we returned to the Massart in Season 3 of Guild Wars 2, the, the devs just kind of wrote them out, you know. They, it really felt like they just wanted to close the door. You know, it was Lazarus, but oh no, it was actually Balthazar, and then oh no, Lazarus is dead, let's just move on from it. That's kind of how it's felt for years with Guild Wars. It's like they're closing doors. They just don't want to talk about it anymore. They don't want to talk about the other Massart that could be out in the mists or on the Isles of Janthea as we can see on the world map, right? They don't want to talk about those things. The Masada are done. And so I'm kind of in that headspace, and then we see a seer, and it's like, oh, cool, they'll do a seer thing. Then immediately, what do I see at the start of this expansion? A Masada. And so what you'll realize, Secrets of the Obscure, they're not closing doors. They're really not. And they've really thought about what's cool about Tyria, and, like, anything is on the... T I, I love this phrase, right? It's got, it kind of gets memed in this community, but it really feels like, from a story perspective, shit can happen, man. And so, yeah, there's a Masa in this expansion. You'll notice he didn't have his wings. There was a little bit of his design that wasn't there. And for a while I thought my game was bugged, but no, that actually gets justified in the story. So, yes. Uh, wow, so what an intro. I mean, really. I think in that video I said, oh my god. If there's a seer and is Garen and Zodja fighting against something and that's the key art, that's pretty cool lore. I think I said something like that. And yeah, it... it <laughs> that, that level stuff is happening, right? So, okay. Um, I don't want to spoil where we go. Not that I've beaten the whole thing, obviously, but yeah. All right, so hello, Zoja. And thank you for giving me the time to speak there, ReNet. <laughs> With me not moving. Usually when you hit a loading screen, stuff doesn't trigger until you start moving. But yeah, so, Zoja. And there's this burly on. And Who's look, fro it's Frode. F. Hello. I love the way the nameplates just update as soon as the dialogue's in the place for it. And so where the fuck are we? In on what's going on? Huh. Where to start? Less banter. More fighting. Okay, now here I want to read the letter. But I don't know. Do you think they'll be fine on their own? We'll see. If they die, then fine. We'll just go in and res them. So yeah, uh, where are we? Well, we open the world map. We're in this strange place. We're at the Horn of the Maguma. Fantastic place to... You know, they could have picked any old random ass locale. This is a bit like Dragonfall, let's be real. In fact, it's a lot like Dragonfall. <laughs> okay. Uh, so they could go anywhere they want. Well, we're, we're up in the horn, and that's cool. I actually love the idea that the third map is like beyond the Bandit Brisbane Bridge and somehow gets us there, but they don't do weirdly shaped maps, I don't know. It's too far. We're so far away. All right, so there's a letter. What is this place? Letter to Moon Camp? Moon Camp? Transcribed from the Warden. What's a Warden? Please deliver to camp leader Wilford. Crypt is push in Amitas, growing more severe. We've lost two Bastions. What's a Bastion? We'll be unable to send more support until the line is held. Permission to break protocol with extreme caution. Avoid cities. Stay rural. So is that why we saw people just chilling out around Cornucopia Fields? So they have protocols. There are Bastion. Cryptis. These are the, the monsters we've been fighting. The horrific creatures. So this is new combat music we're listening to here. Let's get this over with. An ancient mountain. Yeah, I have a. Uh, gust. I have um, like player chatter voices on, which I've had Vigory. disabled for years, and I'm kind of enjoying it, you know. A brilliant ember. But, but you will hear Liz talking a lot in fights. A brilliant ember are and so on. Demons. Cryptus. Who are demons? So technically speaking, you're not incorrect. Okay. Cryptus. I think we got to go. They're organized. They're, they're on your average night terror. Next time they get in a fight, we'll go downstairs and explore again. I think putting that letter in this instance is kind of a mistake because the idea is we're rushing and it's dangerous and it's full of adrenaline. But putting that letter there, what they essentially do to the player is they say, Oh, take your time. Go over it with a fine tooth comb. And we do have all these side rooms. And it's like now the environment is starting to work against them. This is a cool, like, complicated... Gives you the impression of a decent place with lots to explore. But now I'm going to, like, kill the pace and 
plod around and I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't look like there was anything down there. <clears throat> the reality is probably the only letters here are easy to find. There's no achievement to get them all in here. I don't even know if you can come back in here, by the way. It feels to me like with the Cryptus, they took almost every type of enemy you can imagine in the game and made Cryptus variants of them. You know, you'll find big ones, little ones, things that look like Threshers, things that look Never like Jacarandas, like this one here, or, you know, Wind Riders and stuff. They, they, they really went all out, like, by reskinning basically everything. So there's a good variety. Tango over there, shouting. A Nothing down here. Storms. I have my minis randomized, and it picked a very weird one for this, the uh, Festive Lantern. I think I put that as one of my randomized minis because it, like, fits the color theme of my character. So there's a boss here called the Craven. I don't see where it is. Hidden somewhere in the middle here. Oh, no, that's not a boss. It's just a little enemy. The Craven, the Cursed, the Corrupted... There's a cool vibe here. Oh, and another thing you guys might be interested in is it might give you a headache, but y'all get used to it. Promise. What is this thing? The heart of the obscure. We're still learning the depths of its power, but we know it can seal and open rifts. Found a stuff today. Oh, not important, Soja. We need to take control of the situation. So she's given us this artifact. Yeah, you guys might be interested. This is like some weird trivia, and I believe there's only like really one source for it over all these years but before they settled on the elder dragon story you know in like the late 20 uh, 2000s you know probably influenced by stuff like dragon age and things um they did also have an idea of doing like angel and demon type stories and we're kind of there now and you can sort of get a, a sense for that i feel like so here uh yeah the heart of the obscure and this cool animation which we've seen in the press so you run over to a rift and you press f and this will pull out the heart and it will beam the rift and it will close it. What is this mysterious thing? Who made it? Where did they get it from? Soldier won't tell us just yet. This happened very quick in multiplayer because we all pressed F at once. It was quite cool having a whole adventuring party. But we need to keep moving. We were all like different races and stuff. Well, not every single different race, but it was very good. See again, it's like, oh, am I going to miss dialogue or lore? Any letters around? Guess not. And even this just environment with everything like fucked up and destroyed like this, I think it's a nice little map. Oh yeah, so this is outside and you can see we're in some ridiculous looking environment. Up another staircase, much like the previous one. Oh, we got some cool stuff to geek out about in just a second. There's the power. And something I'm really happy about, actually, as well. Like, really happy to do with the wiki. <laughs> and a s sort of snide comment I made the other day. <laughs> and I've been vindicated. All right. Armor enhanced. A brilliant ember. Stabilizing rifts. Many times, rifts will need to be stabilized before they can be sealed. This can be achieved by clearing out any cryptus that have spawned around them. Which we've done. There's nothing more in there. You ran like three times. Maybe that's why you're not that far in the story yet. Yeah, I mean, I feel you, man. I play this stuff slow as well. It's sort of the only way to do it, I think. Otherwise, I'm just not into it. And I'm, you know... Like, you've got a whole ass. A thousand storms! Accelerating. Of course, there is something slightly missing here. You know, with other expansions at about this point, you're probably going to start thinking about the fact that you're rushing towards your first mount or fishing or whatever. This expansion is obviously a lot lighter on that stuff. No I'm new playable the race. Earth. There's just very little, really, like on the gameplay side. In a lot of ways, this expansion is a bit of a disappointment in that it, it feels very much like, you know, it feels like playing a Guild Wars. Any Guild Wars content you've already played you're before. Dumb. But we will get Weapon Mastery in a second, so there's that. And 
No, it says exit the Undercroft. I wonder what's up these stairs, though. Oh, this is a mistake. They're gonna start talking. Oh, there's doors. All right. Rage and a ripple in the earth. A ripple in the earth. Like some of these, I just haven't heard for oh, God so long. Alchemy. And here we are. What's what's going on here? What happened? Let's just say the wizard's tower went a little rogue. Spit out a little magic. Don't think you're helping much, little friend. Is that... Garenhoff? It's not quite your Garenhoff. We'll explain soon. This is about as new to us as it is to you. What a damn mess. <laughs> Frode! Zoja! Help an old sack of iron. Lear! We're coming! Okay, can I just not move? Alright, so we get a title screen, just like the end of Dragons 1. Very good. I like it a lot. People in Discord yesterday were saying it's off-center. I can't see if that's off-center. It doesn't look off-center to me. Um, I have to say, guys, I, mean, I don't really care about spoilers too much. In terms of, like, narrative. In terms of, like, plot. And, like, where things are going and stuff. I don't think spoilers... I don't really care about that kind of thing. I think there are very few movies you can actually spoil by listing out facts about them, right? But there is a kind of spoiler, and that's things that will spoil your experience or your emotion or, your, like, the sensation of a thing. And it's weird in that I actually kind of think this intro was spoiled for me. Genuinely, I would say that it was actually spoiled. And this is, I, I feel like, such a... Uh, this is like so whiny or whatever, but you know like the very first trailer it showed the shattered Garenhoff This moment here if I knew nothing about that if I had never seen that shot that shot We just had where it said they present secrets of the obscure if I had never seen that in a trailer I think that seeing this in game would have blown my fucking mind I would have been like what the shit that's Garenhoff and it's destroyed and there's what, what? It is floating. That would have been the coolest mind blow ever. But because it was in the trailer, because that same visual, like, I think there is something that got lost there. Like, that was spoiled. I looked at so little of the press for this thing, but I feel like that big whoa kind of thing well, was lost for me a bit. It's a great shot. It's really cool. But, you know, I'd seen it already in the trailer. Um, very, very awesome. I just like the idea of new players that come through who don't scavenge every single trailer they get to that and it's like holy shit you would have to kind of hope that they know the layout of Garenhoff well enough though but yeah so what is happening here um we are physically on Tyria just to be clear because that can be kind of hard to tell we move through rifts and dimensions and stuff are we even physically on Tyria that could be a bit unclear but we are you know that what you're looking at here matters the stakes matter here and so on okay so um because that's the problem with going to the mist and telling stories in the mist. It feels somehow disconnected. And we get a bunch of sky, sca sky scales, which of course are a big part of this expansion. Very shiny looking sky scales. On a sky scale. it's the fastest way up. I don't actually know if... Sky scales and I don't get along. Seal the rifts as you ascend. I will do what I can from the ground. This is interesting. I want to know why she doesn't get on with sky scales. I wonder if they explain that. Um, I, is this a skin that's actually in... This is the new skin, I suppose, that you can earn. Very lightning-y, very shiny, very chromatic. You know, I think ArenaNet made a mistake with the Wizard's Vault here. The big prize from the Wizard's Vault at the moment is a mount skin, and that's a brilliant initiative. But they picked a griffin. Who gives a fuck about a griffin? It's a sky scale expansion. Well, it should be a sky scale skin in the Wizard's Vault at the start. I mean, Christ! Really? Um... Seems very odd to me, but there you go. Uh, so we press F. Of course, if you've already got a sky scale, you could just use your own. But I'll I'll rent one. Oh, sorry. These really should be reserved for any of the astral ward who need to evacuate the area. I can tell you've already got one. Mount up. Oh, I I do use my own. Okay. We got our badass Kraukatoric evil looking one. So and they'll teach you all about how to use them. I'm actually a little bit concerned about this. Sky scales, I think, are hard to use. It took me a long time to get you. I, I mean, I'm fine with it now, obviously. But when I first learned it, you know, it's quite a lot. And people are learning that in the, like this big action sequence here. Like clinging to walls and how the juices work and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of juices, there was a lot wrong and a lot rushed about End of Dragons Elite specs. Do you guys want to see a weird little UI thing? If we are a catalyst, we get a catalyst energy, right? 
but they just called it. Now, how do I get to it? If you mouse over it here, it's just catalyst. <laughs> Surely that should say energy, right? I'm sure that's a UI bug. <laughs> the end of Dragons has been out for a while now. But yeah, I saw that the other day. I think I was underwater and only the bar was there or something. Anyway, we get a rift. Maybe it's not a problem to call it catalyst. But it should be called energy, surely. I mean, it's called energy in the traits and stuff. These are a lot slower in single player. I love this idea of these portals where you close the eye. You know, the eye shuts and the portal, the rift goes away. It's just a fun little visual there, I think. Like the eye opens and things can come out. The eye closes and they can no longer. So we are currently standing at a very cool thing, a very special thing. But you can't really tell because of where we've come out. And I think that's intentional. Oh yeah, these guys have a cool like suck mechanic where they pull you, you know, like if you're doing the anchor strike. Some of those uh, risen creatures come and they, you know, they, they suck you towards them and you need to move out of the stack. Like it's a tether that pulls you towards it. There you go, you can kill all of them. Oh, and so this one's in the air, so what this teaches you, okay. I mean, it's kind of rough. They, they should have moved it away from the stairs here because I think people are just going to jump awkwardly on that. But the point is, you can close them on the sky scale. There's a lot going on with the sky scale. You see, I have a new sky scale ability, Fireball. We'll deal with that as we get to it. It's one of the very few masteries I have. I think that was the last thing I did last night. I unlocked it. You see, I'm at 470. I think I started the expansion at like 460 or something. But yeah, the sky scales can close the rifts because at any time you can just pull the artifact out and spin it. See here. Oh, no. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liz was doing it. We'll, we'll deal with that as we go along. Uh, let's deal with this one up here, I suppose. Of course, the other thing is people who don't have the Bond of Vigor either. And the Bond of Vigor is uh, like a huge part of what makes the Sky Scale feel like playable. Don't forget, it was implemented after the Bond of Vigor, so like it was designed around it to an extent. But there is now this thing where players will have one but not the other, which was kind of rare if you think about it, with how everything worked out throughout the Season 4 days. I actually feel like the Sky Scale without the Bond of Vigor probably feels really crap. Only getting two dashes instead of the four. This map is super cool, by the way. It's a lot bigger than I had the impression of. Like, you'd think, oh, floating islands, I have a sky scale. I can just fly anywhere or do anything. But, you know, if you're being asked to fly over there, your sky scale won't make it. So it is cool. There is a bit of a linear progression to the map. You do have to, like, island hop. A bit of that dry top experience. You know, ever since Mounts came out, I feel like you have too much freedom of movement. And it's kind of ruined exploration for me. But on this map, I still feel that because so much of it is like way off across the sky. And I couldn't really visualize or imagine that working out before, but it does work out. There's a field report here. Hastily written. Barely enough time to collect my thoughts. The fractals are here. Here, interior, physically manifested, interior. I don't know what happened, but when we heard the noise, everything collided, condensed, and then collapsed. Garenhoff's in flames just above the beacon, more beyond, screaming from both Astral Ward and what do we call the inhabitants of the fractals? Mercy, Duena. The only fact that brings me any solace is that these seem, uh, these seem to be, according to Dagda, who's Dagda? Oh wait, did we meet Dagda just now? No, we didn't. Uh, we met Lahir. Uh, only fractals corrupted, conjured by the court. The product of existence where they naturally form seems to be unscathed. Disturbance is centrally focused on us. Where is Garen and M Mabon? What do we do? Well, we met Mabon. Mabon was the Massar. He referred to himself as Mabon. Okay, uh, and then there's this big orb thing here, which I assume I might learn more about later in the X pack. Of course, I saw that and I thought about the blue orb, but I don't think. No relation, guys. As far as I can see, anyway. To. So, for some reason, there's fractals or some kind of fractally thing that's collided into Tyria here because of something, we don't know what. If you're feeling very lost at the moment, like, what the fuck, uh, you're supposed to be. I actually think they do a, a kind of rough job properly explaining to the player what the fuck's happening here. They want you to be confused, but I think it's a little bit iffy. But yeah, alright, uh, land on the floating platform. Oh. I don't remember this bit of the story. I thought we'd just be done when we closed that rift. 
What floating platform? This? We can dash. Like, learning this, I mean, it, technically I guess we could just walk up. If we're a new player and we don't really know the sky scale controls too well just yet. But we would want it to get, get up there. Oh Thank yeah, I do remember this. Oh, still adjusting to the split. What's the split? Right with me. So check it out, Lahir. It's a dwarf. Earned us some unwanted attention. Not that I had any say in that. And a really fucking cool-looking dwarf as well. And he has the uh, the effect here, facet of emotion. Great so facets, maximum. I tend to think about Glint's lair. Oh, I tend to think about you know crystals and how magic can be broken into different facets, and ultimately the birth of Orin, the prismatic dragon. But he's talking about a fit, uh, a split, and yeah, there's a facet there. A brilliant ember. So apparently there's us being here has given them a bunch of unwanted attention. So these incursions, these rifts, these were not here Armoring until we got here. So are we being chased by that strange creature we saw in the hells a minute ago? A the the realm ember. of, of uh, mirrors, did they call it? Realm of dreams? So are there two disasters Come overlapping on. right now? One with Make all of these the disturbances, the fractals, and the other with these incursions. So we go, we get to fight alongside a Massar. I don't know if he casts Spectral Agony. That would be the coolest shit ever. You know, Season 3 was really good at that, you know, with like Livia casting Fragility and whatnot. Armor enhanced. Anyway, he looks cool, and you saw he just came through a special portal there. Just the fact we're fighting along inside the Massar immediately is like, <laughs> it's cool. You know, maybe I need to take a second in this playthrough to just explain who the Massar are again for people who don't really know. This is a super old race, like ludicrously ancient. They were around with the previous Elder Dragon rising. And most of them got wiped out and, and killed that were here on Tyria in the events of Guild Wars 1. They were villains there, manipulators, evil seeking to preserve themselves and nothing else. You know, with the previous Elder Dragon rising, people were trying to find ways to fix the problem. The Seers hid magic inside bloodstones. The Jotun looked to the stars and so on. The Massar just ran. They just looked for ways to slip out of phase with Tyria and reality. And they betrayed people. If you remember in Ember Bay, there's some cool thing about an alliance between Forgotten and Massar, but, or well, the Seers or something, and then they, they fled. So these guys are bastards. And we fought an evil one in Season 3, Lazarus, and it felt like Arena Net were just leaving them, but no. Here's another one, on Tyria. Dead. But without wings. She'll be alright, Lair. How are you feeling? Adjusting. The split is never easy. Yeah, and we can see Stay him. He's on. choosing to reveal himself to us. Ah, you all made it. Good. All in one piece. What happened to Iskarin and Dagda? Iskarin? You've probably heard rumors. Possessed. Dagda got it bad. Whatever they hit her with, not great. And our beloved seer is, well, I've seen Isgarin. So in there are seers in this expansion too. Isgarin is a seer. They fled for our own good. Apart sent his strongest to take them down first. Guess that makes you the standing chair of the wizard's court. And how are you doing? Stabilizing. I have questions. Yeah, like a thousand of them. I'm sure you have many. So, Commander, let us fill you in. Okay, um... So we got a dwarf. Is Garen is a seer? So, remember the, um... The image, the press image, where it was like, okay, clearly one of them's a seer. Clearly Zodge is there, who's the third character? And we had a whole discussion in that video. Is, is Garen the third guy and so on? Well, no, I guess the third guy probably was just a stand-in for the commander the whole time. Is Garen is a seer? Remember, okay, so just to be clear, the story is that the seers and the Masat were incredibly powerful, incredibly wise, well, you know, amazing spellcasters, intelligent, dominators of the world. You know, they lived all over. They had great cities everywhere. And they went to war with each other. The Seers versus the Massar. And why, And the, basically, the Massar wiped the Seers out. There were barely any Seers left. So when Guild Wars 1 came around, and our enemies were the Massar, we found a Seer, maybe multiple Seers, and they taught us how to fight against the Massar. So these are both badass ancient races, but they were mortal enemies. Seers versus Massar. Enemies. And yet here, 
we have a Massart who seems to be working with Isgaran, who is a seer. So, I mean, that's just such a cool reveal straight away. Not that Isgaran's here to speak to us. And there's a dwarf in the mix, explaining perhaps that dagger we had before. And, you know, just some normal guys. You know, Narcess here is uh, Silvari. I don't really know about this, much about this character, to be honest. I missed a lot of that last night. And we have an Orn. And we have Zodja here. I mean, Jesus. A so, but what? Th now they're talking about Epoch. They're talking about another off-scene character, Dagda. Who the fuck is Dagda? Dagda's a woman, as they just referred to her. So here we go, Mabon. Let's do Mabon first. I'm sure you have many questions for me. Yes, yes. Quite a few. Are you? I'm a sot, yes. And I'm sure that isn't the biggest shock you've received today. Yeah, is Garen being Wizards, a seer is a pretty big one? Ward, traveling to wherever I was? No, it's not. I apologize if I find it hard to trust you immediately. My only experiences with the Mersat have been... Dire at best, I know. Ask whatever you need. My knowledge is yours. You've placed a lot of faith in us already. See, and I really love that as well. I love hearing Liss, the commander, talk about the events of Season 3. Again, because I just had such a strong vibe that... They didn't really want to talk about season three anymore. I don't want to talk about Lissa's mirror. I don't want to talk about any of those weird little things. You know, Kerida and Livia were there at the end. They don't want to deal with any of that shit. It's over, man. We're just trying to close the door. And now here, it's like, it's so refreshing to actually hear the commander talk about, you know, the stuff that happened with Lazarus there. Um, so, uh, yeah, someone in chat says, we have not seen a seer in Guild Wars 2 before, right? Yeah, exactly, Joey. We've never seen a seer in Guild Wars 2. We barely saw them in Guild Wars 1. I mean, barely. There was, like, a cutscene and a couple of tiny interactions in Prophecies, and then nothing in Factions, nothing in uh, Nightfall, nothing in Eye of the North, and then they started doing Guild Wars 1 Living World, and there was, like, a tiny hint about one. You saw one getting dissected on a table. That was basically it. You know, it was dead already, and the Yasuro were messing with it. Oh, man, I wonder if this expansion talks about that. That would be cool. All right, what is this place? We are currently standing outside the Beacon of Ages. You may recognize it from folklore. Tyria dubbed it the Wizard's Folly Tower. Not our choice, of course. We have beacons such as this all over the world. They are conduits, so to say. The shield that they powered was recently broken, hence... Well, all of this. Okay, all right. This land is ancient and sacred. High above us in the clouds lies Omnitas, our home. Unfortunately, we're barred from getting any closer until we can quell the tower's defenses. Okay. Um, first, I think there's something weird going on with the implementation here. If you read what he said... He said, we have beacons all over the world. The tower on the horizon, you may recognize that too. So when he says the tower on the horizon, I'm pretty sure what he's referring to is the wizard's tower. The Garenhof wizard's tower. The thing that just disappeared, okay? They call these towers beacons. They don't just have this generic name. And he says, there's one on the horizon. I, however, cannot see anything on the horizon. On the world map, I do know that, in theory, on the horizon is the Wizard's Tower. It moved from Garenhof over here, okay? Um, so, in theory, we should be able to see it there, but I can't. It's set at night, the view distance, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe if I look really carefully. Now, that, didn't, that got printed, but it was cut out of the audio. So, I wonder if there's a bit of an implementation issue going on here. Maybe ArenaNet realized it wasn't actually visible on the horizon so they cut the dialogue but then they didn't fully cut it so it's still there in text that's what i guess is happening there the other thing though is there was a there was a bug with this game for years where if you had like uh in sound options there's sound quality if you had this slider maxed out for years it would sometimes fuck up the timing of npc speech and cause them to interrupt themselves and stop speaking early and uh, apparently the fix, I never verified this, but apparently the fix was to click it down by one. Um, anyway, that was a huge thing in core. They they've ne they haven't had that issue for years. They've resolved that. And by the way, there were some things that even if you did this, it wouldn't work. Like uh, when I was doing the personal story, let's play, I had to data mine some audio just to snip it in and editing so you guys could actually hear the fucking stuff. Which, yes, that does mean that in my let's play, some cutscenes play out 
correctly in ways that no player ever experiences because they didn't data mine to get the audio. Anyway, um, they haven't had that for years, and yet then it just happened there. He seemed to interrupt himself. So I think ArenaNet cut that line because you can't actually see the Wizard's Tower. I don't know, though, for sure. I'm tempted to say, oh, maybe a different day-night cycle, but it's always going to look like this because that's defined by the instance. So anyway, that's one thing. The other thing, let's be clear. They're talking about the Wizard's Folly! Okay, so... Way back in Guild Wars 1, literally, if you guys pause this video, go buy a Guild Wars 1 account, all right, and log in on Guild Wars 1, all right, and you play the first campaign right at the fucking start of everything, all right, we're way back in 2006 here. The game starts at a place called Pre-Searing Ascalon, which is year, two years before the main story. It's like a giant tutorial zone, a massive tutorial area, but really, really impressive, very cool. There's a place off the beaten path there called the Wizard's Vo Folly, right at the start. Literally, you could pause this and you could go be playing that within the hour. All right, it's a place called the Wizard's Vo Folly, and there's a tower there. And, um, you know, technically it's positioned, like, down here or something, right? It's here in Ascalon. After the two-year time jump and the tutorial goes away, you can never return. And in Guild Wars 2, it's never been there. We, we can't go there. So it's just, it's just like this little mystery. It is a Wizard's Tower... If you're an elementalist, you get like a skill quest there, but they never talk about it. You, you get a brief glimpse of it in a tutorial, and that's it. it that, it's gone. Meanwhile, there's this one at Garenhof, which people have been speculating about for years and was in both Guild Wars 1 and 2, and it was floating, and it's all that much more captivating. So technically, there are two Wizards Towers. There's just one that only the super nerds know about, the, the proper Guild Wars geeks know about, the Wizards Folly one. There's been no hints about it for over a decade, just nothing, right? Now... When when this expansion got announced about the Wizard's Tower, and it was going to be a Wizard's Tower expansion, naturally some of us started asking, well, what about the second one? What about the super geeky one? What about the Wizard's Folly? And there was a bit of a conversation, like, is it going to be relevant? Is it connected in any way? And here's the, here's the thing. I said I've been vindicated, right? On the wiki, on the Guild Wars 1 wiki, the Guild Wars 2 wiki, there has been a note for years... And in the note, and remember the wiki players maintain, players put this stuff in. Some player had written, by the way, this one, the Wizard's Folly, is completely not connected to this one. It's not connected. It's been confirmed by the devs. It's not connected. And that's been the note. Now, what that means is for years and years and years, players go to the wiki, like uninformed players, they read the note and they just take that as the truth they just take that as fact oh they're not connected so then when the expansion gets announced everyone's like well ignore this because the wiki says it's not connected however that note was always nonsense and i talked about this on my video when when this got announced i talked about it because if you actually look at the source of that note that the two wiki that the two towers aren't connected it's an interview and you read the dev comment from the interview and it doesn't say that at all it's maybe a suggestion that they're not connected but it's clearly a speculative thing and it was one of those things where the wiki failed the players a little bit you know it was like a player's head cannon and they just decided it was, it was that was the thing and the note was wrong and i said in my video i said guys ignore the wiki on this one if you actually read the source they could totally be connected the wizard's folly might be a part of this expansion so the other thing is in the trailer for the expansion, there was some guy on the official forums who was like looking at the horizon, right? And he saw this like pillar and he was like, oh, that's the wizard's folly. That's the wizard's folly. And a lot of us looked at that and we were like, no, man, uh, they might be connected or whatever. And, you know, that whole discussion I just went through you here happened. But is it the wizard's folly? And in my video, I said, mm, I, I think it's very unlikely. That's crazy. They wouldn't put the wizard's folly in the background on the trailer as well. That wouldn't happen. It's there, guys. That's it. That's the wizard's folly. That guy with that forum post who was like, that's the wizard's folly in the background, he was right. It is the wizard's folly. And it's here in the expansion. And so the trailer, we're looking at it from, like, the other direction, I think. I'm pretty sure. But that's it, guys. That's the wizard. It, it, they are connected. They're both here. I'm so impressed with that. The arena net were like, well, let's do both wizard's towers. And we will learn about it. In fact, we just did. This is what Mabon was talking about. So to... Um, to retread what he just said, he says, We are currently standing outside the Beacon of Aegis. So, the Wizard's Folly was like a generic word we've used for it. It's actually called the Beacons of Beacon of Aegis. This is all new law now, okay? That It's a part of the Wizard's Court and everything that these guys have been doing. Turns out they have lots of these beacons. 
You may recognize it from folklore. Tyria dubbed it the Wizard's Folly Tower. It wasn't our choice, of course. But we have beacons all over the world. The Tower on the Horizon, the Garenhof Wizard's Tower, that we can't actually see. That's a beacon as well. So I don't know what it... I mean, it's called Be Wizard's Tower. I assume this has a name. It's the beacon of something else. But yeah, the Wizard's Folly is the beacon of ages. And here we are. And both of them have moved. The Wizard's Folly one moved apparently years ago. I guess it came here years ago. But now even the Garenhof one's moved as well. And I don't really know those details. As I say, I haven't played very far into the expansion. But yeah, so oh, this is all really cool. This is all very rewarding for lore nerds. And hopefully through my explanation here, I've given this to you guys. I played it yesterday with people who didn't understand or give a fuck about any of this. And they just sort of, you know, just went through it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they're very, very cool. And you, you, what's even better, right, is that room up there connecting the two towers. It's there in Guild Wars 1. It's just very primitive. It's a very simple little model. And there's no flying or even jumping or anything. But in this game, we can fly up there and go into the room and everything. Um, so yeah, they have beacons, different magical structures. And one of the cool things about the world building here is... There's a bunch of them that we haven't seen yet. And later in the story, they're going to talk about how some beacons have been like abandoned or haven't been manned for years and years and years. And that's all fascinating to me as well. I wonder whether in the upcoming quarterly updates we'll get some of those. And there'll be some of the rift hunting maps and things. I don't know. Um, so, yes. What else did he say? We have these beacons. The beacons are conduits. They shield, the shield that they powered was recently broken, hence, well, all of this. So all the different towers were powering some shield. I don't really know what that is. I think it's called the Spire. We'll deal with that as we go forwards, because, you know, there's a story coming up. This land is ancient and sacred, apparently, because high above us in the clouds lies another place, Amnitas, and that's their home. So I know there's a lot of locations to think about right now. You've got the beacons, which are the different towers, but there's also a big place, Amnitas. And that's, like, up there. Uh, but we can't get to Amnitas right now. We're barred from Amnitas until we can quell the, the, the wizard's tower's defenses. So, I mean, to be honest, guys, this is, again, one of those things where there's a fucking cool story here, but there's so many moving pieces. To get that all wrapped up in your head, I think you have to be quite a smart person to just hear this dialogue and immediately have it all make sense. But yeah, so, um, but they only have limited screen time, whatever, so we get through it really, really fast. So what's the wizard's core, exactly? The people who built these beacons, made this shield, made Amnitas, or that's their home? What the fuck is all of this stuff? So by the way, I think the reason we're at the Horn of Maguma is because Amnitas is here, so they moved the other beacons here as well, I guess. What, what is the wizard's core? We are protectors, not too dissimilar from yourself and your liege, Arine. While you kept Tyria safe from the threat of the dragon cycle, we watched you from the clouds. Until recently, the World Spire has powered a shield that guarded this world from the mists, to an extent. The final dragon cycle weighed heavily on our ability to shield ourselves. Nightfall came, Balthazar. Tyria has suffered still. But when the cycle ended, the magical ecosystem was fractured, the lake stilled. And now, you can see to the bottom. Aurene has begun to restabilize the system. I can feel her at work now. But until we mend the spire and our beacons, we are blood in water. Not only to the Cryptus, but anything else that may be looking. So there's that reference to Aureen. That I talked about, it feels very cohesive. I wonder why he can feel what she's doing. I guess because he's a Masai, he's an amazing spellcaster. And ancient, by the way. This thing we're speaking to is old. Because the Masai are so cool. And now we get like one that's being friendly to us at the moment, at least. Don't forget, the Masai are typically tricksters and deceitful. I, I think... I'm not going to say whether I believe it or not, but I think going at him with a bit of suspicion is a good idea. I think it adds a bit of tension to the story. Because he is a Masai, after all. Um... But yeah, and there's that, that, that metaphor with blood in the water and the lake stilling. I think that's quite a nice visual. I don't think there's actually a real lake. I think it's just a metaphor. But uh, yeah, so the beacons are like conduits. They send power to this spire. It's called the World Spire. 
and the world spire has this shield that guards the world from the mist. So they again, there's this big thing, a big duty of this expansion is why the fuck if this if there's this really incredible thing going on, why haven't we heard about it before? How is it possible that these people with this strength they didn't do anything? They just how do they how do they watch us? And again, ArenaNet isn't scared to really let us attack that and ask that question. So, um, yeah, apparently some big shit's been happening here. Who are the Astral Ward? So what do we ask just now? We asked what the wizard's court is. That's the court. What's the ward? They are our protectors. While the other wizards and I kept the shields in place, the Astral Ward kept eyes on the rest of the world. Despite our best efforts, there are cracks in every system. Creatures of the mists have found ways inside. The ward protects you from them. Every time a rift opens in Tyria, they seal it and kill whatever terror it has set loose. So to be honest, I'm not too clear on this bit. The wizards caught are from Amnitas and they power the shield and all that stuff. The ward are separate or are they just like a contingent of them? The ward are the rift hunters, I guess. That's that's how I've got that figured out. I don't know if they're like an entirely separate organization or what or they're just like underlings. I don't know, but they're like the warriors that go in and close the rifts. That's the ward. And there's a mastery line for each, I think. Um, but they kind of feel like all just the same, really, to me. But that's probably because I'm, I'm quite unfamiliar with all this story and I'm trying to get it right in my head. Uh, who are the Cryptis? The Cryptis are demons. They evolved, learned. Their influence and power grew under the guidance of their leader, Epoch. Centuries ago, Epoch wanted to join our ranks, but Iskarin denied him entry. He found Epoch to be ignorant, hungry. Demons tend to be solitary creatures, but Epoch saw potential. Wells of power that they'd yet to tap into. He dubbed himself their king and built a society in his own image. One of fear and anger. Naos. The realm of dreams. They've spent centuries watching us and others, learning all they can. Now they've chosen to act. So, I'm guessing this is the big villain, unless there's some twist and turn. Epoch, the Demon King. Cool idea. I, is he the guy that we saw at the end of the trailer that I thought might be Menzies? Is there a Menzies connection at all? I really don't know. Um, and there doesn't have to be. I mean, what they've explained there is there's a demon who built his own plane. So there's a funny thing with Guild Wars Law. You remember at the start of this, I was talking about Guild Wars Law feeling like it didn't have a real history or the bounds were never explored very much. You know, when I think about Guild Wars and the Mists and other realms, you know, I tend to think about it in a very de facto way. Oh, well, there's a realm for each of the gods. And, you know, maybe we can look at some of the world versus world law with the alternate realities. But you don't really think much beyond those. You know, if they're going to do a Mist story, it is going to be the underworld or the fissure of woe. This is a fact. But here, I think they do something quite cool and they're kind of showing, you know... A demon with enough power and enough allies. He's built a faction for himself. He's just made another plane, you know. And that's where we were a second ago. This is my understanding of the story anyway. And it's called the Realm of Dreams. Is it connected to other stuff? Who knows? But, I mean, I, I'm happy to just take that as... And if you think about the fractals, you know, islands of existence that form, it's a similar thing. And you're going to learn the wizards have been messing with a fractalish type thing as well, which explains some of this craziness in the background. There's a lot to get through here. I mean, fucking hell, actually, if I really think about it. But yeah, so Epoch, I really like this idea that he wanted to join them. He was turned away. Uh, will we find out more of that? I hope so, and I hope it's a good uh, story. But what you just got there about with that story is your first glimpse at something else. Is Garin the seer? You might think, okay, well, look, we've got a dwarf. Sorry, I clicked Zodger there. We got we got a dwarf who's been here for ages. We got a Massar. We got a seer. Are these guys like joint rulers of this society? You know, um, this Dagda character, whoever it is. Are they just all powerful people that work together? No, they have a leader. It is Garin. So it, there's something cool going on here as well. For years, right? There's the mystery of the Wizard's Tower, and lore geeks have speculated about it, and it's been like, who's is Garin? Who's is Garin? When it comes to answering that question, the writers can do a few things. They can just be quite understated about it and hand wavy about it and say, oh, here's his Garin, and you just speak with him, and he's a nobody, you know? Or he's not a big cog, or he, you know, he's just around. 
But what I really like that the writers did here is they seem to say, well, look, people have been wondering about Isgaran for years. Let's go big with it. Let's do a big payoff. And they've done that. They've not only made Isgaran a seer, which is fucking cool, but Isgaran is like the big swinging dick, guys. He's like the dude here. Um... And you got a little sense of that there. It was Isgaran's choice to turn away I Epark. And you're going to find Isgaran, like, rules this place and these people. And they're all subordinate to Isgaran. And I think that's a really cool answer. And that's actually, like, they answered who's Isgaran. They made that feel like a worthwhile thing to speculate about. Because there is a cool big answer. A, a powerful, prominent character. It's not like a hand-wavy thing. It's not a little thing. So I think they made the right call with that as well. Okay, and now we can ask, okay, why haven't I heard about any of this? That was Iskarin's choice, and he made it long ago. He felt that the world only needed to focus on one terror at a time. Though I do admit, maybe this would have been prevented if we had asked for help sooner. That's one of those lines where I kind of wonder if there's a bit of meta-commentary there. Iskarin felt we only need to focus on one terror at a time. Is that also kind of the writer saying... Why did we linger on the Elder Dragon so long before ever looking at this? Well, we felt we should really just focus on the Elder Dragons. But, you know, and then if it is meta-commentary, I think that the studio is being too humble about itself. Because them saying, I admit, maybe this would have prevented if we'd done something different or asked for help. That's not really fair to them. The, the studio did try other stuff. Season 1 didn't look at the Elder Dragons very much initially. Whenever they turned away from the Elder Dragons, even for a moment, they got hit with huge complaints and whining. You know, oh, if the Elder Dragons are destroying the world, why aren't they doing anything? Blah, blah, blah. And there are always fine answers to that. The Elder Dragons devour magic on, you know, cosmic timescales. 50 years, 10 years, 5 years. They don't have to be doing stuff always every second of of the day but you know arena now always listened to those criticisms and kept railroading us with the Eld uh, elder dragon storyline instead of putting it aside look at the worst moment in the story the end of the ice Bridge saga they made the decision to say fuck it just get rid of primordus and just get rid of end of drag do the end of dragon so we can move on they made that decision they didn't have to do that they could have just sidelined them and gone to stories they wanted to tell they could have sidelined it but they chose to railroad it all they chose to rush 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 deal with the elder dragons and they did that for a very important reason they they sabotaged their own story but they did it for an important reason it's because the community was constantly telling them to keep focusing on the elder dragons and they felt like they couldn't take a minute to breathe so you know i think if they're being meta here that's you know, they, they did try to breathe in the earlier days. All right, there you go. That's all I have. And, of course, there's Zodja, who now is a reveal unto her own right. Feels like a minor part of all of this. Zodja, it's been a long time. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's been an eventful day. I suppose I'm still in shock. <laughs> I bet you are. It's good to see you. And you, we have a lot to catch up on. Indeed. <laughs> Is someone trying to troll me in chat? God, he loves to hear himself talk. WP, arrogant and egotistical as always. Is that just a pay your response? <laughs> you know, in a Let's Play, I have to talk. It's good to see you again, though. I'm sure we both wish it were under different circumstances. What else would you like to know? Um, well, where have you been? Here. I went back to Radisum after Maguma. <laughs> oh, is that a copy paste? Deal, but nothing worked. <laughs> it was different, and it didn't feel like home. They treated me differently. So I traveled, and I traveled and traveled until I found somewhere I belonged. They took me in, helped me heal. Been here since. So they do a bit of a depression arc for Zodja. We'll talk more about this in the upcoming parts. And it's weird. I don't know how much I really buy it their answer essentially to where the fuck has zodja been is well with the wizard's court but of course the conversation goes on and and then people will will say well why didn't she tell us she was going to the wizard's court at first why was she giving us the the silent treatment before then after the maguma and their answer to that is well she was depressed and she talks a lot about that in this but i don't know whether i really get it because she had friends. She had re reunited with Divinity's Reach at that point. She had connections. She had a life built for herself. And ArenaNet just kind of asks us to 
ignore that because oh she she felt like home was different or something and she couldn't heal and you, of course they got the other issue that logan healed up perfectly fine i'm guessing those blog posts i skipped before this came out were trying to dive into that so i'm not sure i really buy it but to be honest i don't really care that much this expansion's dealing with so many other cool things i mean screw it right what else would you like to know how did it get here the wizard's court keeps all of this a secret when i left ratasum i just wandered for a while see like she just abandoned everyone and walked I, off i felt i ran into another asura in a hunting lodge outside divinity's reach you know i told her my story she told me hers then she took me to meet Mabon, and the rest is history. So Yuna is another Asura here. I really love Yuna. Yuna's like an old lady Asura, which is not a character archetype I think we've really seen before. She's very cool. Um, also, do you know what I kind of like about this? I'm sure that the devs aren't going for this, but I love this thing of Zodja wandering in the Crichton countryside and then being elevated off to some other place. Isn't it a lot like Saul getting kidnapped by the Massat? I'm sure I'm just... There's no real reason to think about that and there's no significance there, but it's it's cool. Um, are you in this astral ward? Yeah, I am. Been studying under Mabon for a few years now. He saw something in me. Not just my brain, but he saw a flicker of power in me. Magic. More than just the elements. I have always been proud of being a scientist and believe me, I still am. But I never thought there was something else in there waiting to come out. Uh, by the way, Zodja's quite nice in this. I, I, she, she's definitely she's not as mean as she was in the personal story. She's uh, and uh, she's fun to be around. There's a bit in a minute where we get a decision of do we want to go with all these characters or all these characters, and like it's so easy to pick the side that Zodja's on because basically all the best characters are there. Uh, Thorin said, WP, if someone has depression, you can't just go, well, you can't be because you have friends. Jesus fucking Christ. That's not what I meant at all. I mean, if you want to assume that that's what I meant, then go ahead. But that's not what I meant. I was talking more about how she abandoned everything and all her support systems and the life that she had built. You know, Arena Net very hand wavily says, oh, she's depressed, so she just wandered off. I don't buy that. I don't buy that people get depressed and wander off. You know, people have ruts. People have lives. No matter how depressed they are, they are connected to things. And so that's that's what I meant with the friends. I meant that there are systems in place. She will have had work colleagues. She will have had obligations. She will have had a life in Ratasum, you know. Um, not everybody just wanders off into the country. And I get that they're not saying not everybody does either. But I don't know. I just, I feel like, I don't know whether they justified it well enough. And I haven't played the whole story, so maybe they do later. But no, I'm not saying just because someone has friends, that means that they can't be depressed. Obviously, I'm not saying that. You shouldn't assume that worse than people. That's all for now, but let's catch on more later. And then, of course, we get the dwarf, Lahir. I Actually, I don't know if I've been saying his name right. Every time I hear it, it goes in one ear or the other. Is it Lear or Lahir? I think it's the two syllables, Lahir. Ah, you must be the commander Maban spoke so highly of. I guess you're about what I expected. And what did you expect? Couple more scars. Taller, maybe. I jest. We monitor you as we monitor all magical anomalies. <laughs> Don't worry. You're one of the good ones. If you weren't, well, you'd be dead. <laughs> Commander, I require your attention. Come speak to me. Please. Yeah, in a second. We'll do this first. Uh, Venusian says, Well, almost dying in a blighting pod would have been traumatic. Even Logan, who wasn't as hard change and became the pack commander... Uh, different ways of dealing with trauma. It's not just depression, it's PTSD. Yeah, but these aren't, you know, these aren't West Coast California people going to work in an office all day that then experience some kind of trauma. These are hardened heroes in a world filled with magic that have already had an entire novel written about the life or death catastrophic traumatic situations that they've been in, been in and what they've pulled through. You know, Zodger isn't us it's zodger it's a hero who spent most of her adult life fighting the fight against the elder dragons and you know working with those kinds of scenarios and yeah i think the fact that logan had the exact same situation and kind of shrugged it off and it was never made to be a big deal makes it difficult for me to then say oh that's the answer it was just the blighting pot you know i think they could have done a better job on that bit so far again i haven't played the whole story things are chaotic around here 
What happened to the other wizards, Isgaran and Dagda? Possessed. It's a nasty little trick courtesy of our friends, the Cryptus. They wiggle their way into your mind. Corrupt each thought one by one until you're raw. The pain refuses to cease. And why didn't you get possessed? Well, not for lack of trying. I came pre-built with a special little ability that allows me to split in two. Can't take over my consciousness if half of it is hightailing it to the wizard's tower, can you? Alright. You aren't made of stone? I'm not. No. Ascended before the last dwarf turned. I have... Uh, strange feelings about that. The right. But I'm reaching for something that isn't there or behind a thick wall. Must be sounding a little... woo to you, aren't I? Wizards like Maban and I are a little different from you mortals. We need it to ascend to get these powers. Separate our planes of consciousness so that we can connect to the current. In simpler terms, our old self is put on a separate shelf. Our new self, our wizard selves, take over. So I've got a lot of theories about this stuff. So they're talking about ascending. Ascending means something in Guild Wars, the whole closer to the gods thing and so on. And I don't know whether this is explicitly like connected to that stuff. Let's just move that to a side for now and not talk about that until later. Um, but this idea that everybody like separates and this splitting thing, this is all really interesting and new. Now, there's something very weird going on with these fractals and the people that live in them that I wonder is maybe connected to this. It might not be. It might be. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot, and I like Lahir so far. Okay, hello, Frode. And Arena. She didn't make it back. Maban focused all of his energy on grabbing the commander. There's so she many characters. She has half the strength of her mother. I pity the cryptus that tries to put her down. Oh, yes. Glad to see you on your feet. So I don't really know anything about Me Arena. Too. I suppose we finally have a breath for a proper introduction. Name's Frode. Welcome to the Astral Ward. Oh, you guys are talking a lot about this depression thing. Look, I mean, it might be viable. It might, it might track as her story. I think the other thing that I kind of don't like about it is the big theme and big arc for Zodja in Core was to stop being so independent and to, you know, when you look at the end of Crucible of Eternity, everyone's back together and they're like, Zodja, let's get the group back together. And she still says, no, fuck off, I'm doing my own thing. And then finally in a rush, she comes at the last moment to save the day. You know, that's like the big victory. Then we have a tiny little excursion in Maguma and then she's just vanished again. And maybe that's like consistent for her character, but it really felt like core was about Zodja putting aside old issues with Snaf and stuff. And that she could now finally go to these people and she could be something. And, and, and then and then ArenaNet just come years later and say, oh, well, she, she just left again. And I think if Secrets of the Obscure talks about all that stuff, if I get a moment where I can say to Zodja, man, you know, I really thought that you had connected with Destiny's Edge. I thought you would have gone to Logan and Ritlock and stuff. I, I would have thought that... You know, you would have found something there. Then that's really good. And then she, then she has the opportunity to say no. You know, I was just devastated by this blighting pod, which really was never shown to have that much significance. Um, it, it also feels kind of iffy to me that they were so happy to hand wave the issues of the blighting pod before, but now lean on it as some big character shift for her. And maybe that's a good thing though, because then maybe. Maybe it's like them going back and turning the blighting pod into something real. So maybe maybe that's good. I know it's just weird. I, I think it's just a bit too hand wavy. Okay. Uh, you prove your courage and tenacity. What more would you like to know? Well, I won't click the top one. You all know who I am? Question mark. So here we get a little bit more of this. Like, okay, the players didn't know about this stuff. But these guys knew about us, which helps to paper over this issue of, like, why is all this now a thing? Of course we do. We've watched your whole journey. Amazing, really. It's a bit jarring to see you in the flesh. You've got quite the fan club up here. We didn't always know if you were an ally. But, I mean, no offense. You've experienced so much. <laughs> I can't blame you for being hesitant. Uh, sub WP new mic? No, this is not a new microphone. 
Um, does it sound good today? If it does, I'll try and keep these settings. Uh, about Arena, dot, dot, dot. It's okay. She's endured worse. If anyone can build a life for herself in a realm of rot and chaos, it's my daughter. So she's a Norn, his daughter. Is that a compliment? <laughs> That's very cool, Mary, Arena by the way. is your daughter? I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was walking into. That's not your fault. Being a member of the Astral Ward comes with severe consequences. Why am I... S so, again, I don't remember. Did we meet Ar Arena down there? We didn't, did we? God, I played that opening sequence twice now. We didn't meet Arena. What happened to her exactly? She got abducted before... Did she get stuck through the portal in Gendarin? Was she at the camp? Alright, she was the grouchy Norn from the night sneak mission. Okay. And what happened when we went through the portal? Did she just disappear? I woke up alone in there. There were bodies around me. So I guess she comes back in the story later, maybe? Oh, she was literally the one that didn't let me in, and then I had to come back at night time. Okay. Uh, does anyone else miss the amazing stylized cutscenes we used to get in POF and Heart of Thorns? They were cool and unique. Uh, yeah, I thought they were pretty good. Um, I'd like, like one of those per back or something. We heard her screaming. Oh, was it her with the blood-curdling scream? Okay. And then, of course, there's the demon, and then there's the other voice in our head, which is a woman's voice, but I don't think that that's her. Or if it is, I don't know that yet. I haven't played that far into the story. So, you two are members of this ward. We are. What our modest friend neglects to mention is that he is our valiant leader and guide. <clears throat> I am Narcisse. I specialize in medical magics and herbal remedies. If you ever find yourself with a demon on your shoulder, give me a call. <laughs> Funny. So we do. Will do. <laughs> oh, that was good. The Asura player character voice actress did that very well. My Norn just said, will do, like like it was nothing. And I kind of had a weird moment. So we have a spoiler channel. If you go to the Discord, guys, we have a spoiler channel uh, for Secrets of the Obscure, and the GM's named it Sec uh, Spoilers of the Obscure, which is a very good name. Anyway, I was in there last night. Um, because I saw a cool character that we're about to see in a second. And uh, the first message I read in there, and one of the, my friends who I was playing this with had said the same thing. Like, why the fuck aren't we telling people about this voice in our head? But don't worry, we will eventually. But yeah, uh, Liz is like, oh, there's a voice. But she's keeping it quiet for now. So, Fro, do you want it to speak to me? What, what? I do. Now that you've got some sense of our situation, I've set up a meet with the rest of the Rift Hunters. Rift Hunters? Are they also Astral Ward? Correct. I'll explain later. Got a camp set up nearby. I'll walk you through everything. Got it. I'll see you there soon. Okay. There they have it. We get some Tales of Adventure. There's so much going on with the items and stuff here, guys. I mean, it's crazy. This is obviously we're just dealing with story here, but this series I do want to do the lot. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get the collections. We're gonna do things. So we'll learn about this stuff. Nice, it's day. I like this place in the daytime. Where are you? You worry too much. So, I really like this voice in my head. I think it's an interesting thing. The one thing that drags it down a little bit for me is the Ice Brood Saga kind of already did a thing whispering in our head and it feels a little bit like a rehash. And the Ice Brood Saga felt a little bit of a rehash of Morgamoth if you did a Silvari run. But whatever, right? Let's ignore that shit. This is Over cool. Here. I like how they're whispering us. This is what we saw them doing at the end of End of Dragons as well. You know, when you're rising in the final meta, all your old heroes would send whispers to you. Um, so, yeah, and we're at daytime, finally. You know, so much of what we just played. We were in a demon realm. We were at a camp at night. We were in that other place at night. It's now the next day. God, if the day-night cycle hadn't been quite rightly lined up there, it would have been night here again. Um, and so, yeah, we can go to Garenhoff. Now, this thing, or this chaos here, is a whole other big mystery that they're now going to start dealing with. I think some of the story plays a little bit out of order, which is going to be a bit of a shame. But that will be in the next part. I want to end this part with this guy, finally, looking out at the Wizard's Folly Tower is an NPC, and he has an event for you. He's called Galrath the Undying, and this is why I went into that spoiler channel in Discord, because this is Galrath. <laughs> so... And it was at this point I, start, I, well, I first started to think, oh my god, they've really, really been working with the lore. 
So he says, this had better be important. I'm very busy. And we say, what are you working on? And he says, keeping this place from falling apart. And we say, fair enough. And then I say, I think somebody spilled something in the hallway. They did what? Oh, when I get my hands on those recruits. And we say, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. And that's it. And it's like, okay, we could just run past this guy and, and that's it. But this is another Guild Wars 1 lore bomb. Um... So I want you guys to imagine, I'm speaking to Guild Wars 2 players here, I want you to imagine that after Grandmaster traits, there's another tier. You know, you need more points to get there. But instead of leveling up or doing hero challenges, there's like quests you have to do. In the whole game, there's two side quests and you do those side quests to get the, enough points to get up to the other tier. Okay. That's essentially how Guild Wars 1 worked. There were a couple of quests called attribute point quests and they were really important quests in terms of hitting stat cap. And one of the attribute point quests in Guild Wars 1 was in Kryta. You were at Lion's Arch. And it was a really generic quest. There was basically no information. It was called the Villainry of Galrath. So this is 250 years ago, because it's Guild Wars 1. And you just hear about this bad guy in Kryta that you've got to go and kill. And that's it. And it's an attribute quest because to get there, you kind of had to do this long winding walk like this. Like far away from a lot of settlements into a remote map called the K this is Kessex Hills, but Guild Wars One had a huge map here called the Kessex Peak, and you'll go all the way along. Actually, I think it was more down here, and you come all the way down here, the Kessex Peak, and in the distance you see the Wizard's Tower, and here's Galrath, and he's just like this goon, and you kill him, and that's it, and you get your attributes. The Wizard's Tower is in the background, but you don't really get to see or know anything, anything more, and that's it. Uh, Guild Wars 2 comes out, they move it there, and, and it's over. But if you were a Guild Wars 1 player, after having done the attribute quest, if you do the walk again all the way back through, you don't find Galrath there, you find a bunch of necromancers from the cult of Verata. And there, and Verata was this guy that was referenced in pre-searing, who was looking into Minumancy, but there's just all these cultists there. And it's like, well, what the fuck's going on with that? That's weird, isn't it? And again, the wizard's tower's in the background. Far that's it, that's the whole story. Fast forward, way, 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 way off into the future, and what do I see here at the start of this expansion? I see an undead called Galrath. So I don't know what's going on here. Maybe you guys do, because you've played a bit further. But this blew my mind. What this essentially is suggesting, as far as I can tell, is that after you kill Galrath, those cultists, the Varatan cultists, got his body and reanimated it. Just like Rurik was reanimated, for example. And here he is, 250 years later. Now, why would he be here around the Astral Ward and the Wizard's Court? My theory is... Now, if you watch my Guild Wars 2 Mysteries video on the Wizard's Tower from years ago, I think I suggested in that video that maybe Verata was another name for Isgaran. Maybe they're all the same dude. And Isgaran the Seer... What, sorry, is Garin this year was like looking into Minion Mancy for a while or something, and it's Verata. I don't know for sure, but that would explain why an undead Gareth's here. Why is there an undead Gareth here? Is he a pet of Verata's, of Is Garin's? Did Is Garin see Verata fucking about in the fields below him and eventually intercede and, and Gareth came up with him or something? I don't know. I don't know, but this is very cool, a really interesting mystery to me. And I don't know whether they pay off on this. I don't know whether I learn the story of Gaurath as I go forwards. But the fact he's here is amazing. And again, it's one of those things where it's like, we did not see the writers doing stuff like this through season one, through season two, the majority of season three. And then as the Elder Dragons became bigger and bigger things, season four is great, but again, didn't really have time for a lot of this stuff. And here he is. So this blew my mind. And I went to the spoiler channel and put a little screenshot. I don't know if you guys know more about Gaurath, but wow. Uh, and that's my theory. I'm thinking maybe is Garen is Verata, or at least saw Verata near the tower and went and dealt with the cult or something. I don't know. I don't know. But, ah, oh, it's cool, isn't it? And there you go. So, on the next part, we will explore the Wizard's Folly, also known as the Beacon of the Ages. Um, we will learn why there is a destroyed Garenhof there, and we will start exploring this big-ass map the sky scale influence the splitting there's a lot going on here so uh so yeah and we'll just play ahead uh what i'm also going to do now is once i'm done with this i'm going to get some food and then uh, i'm going to play um 
more privately as well. So I'm, I might have beaten it by tomorrow. I don't know how long this is. Currently, I'm at the sweet spot where I'm in that really good place where I haven't beaten it yet and it doesn't feel like I'm near the end. So it just feels amazing. Like, oh, the content to play is good, 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 good. I'm sure that by the time I come back tomorrow, these will be daily videos, by the way, guys. I'm sure that when I come back tomorrow, I, I will have beaten it and I'll be like, oh, it's too small and I'll be whiny and blah, 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 blah. But so far, I'm genuinely really impressed with this. I think it's very good. To anyone on the fence, maybe you've seen some... Um, you know, and haven't bought this or haven't played this. Maybe you've seen some things that make you think, okay, maybe it's worthwhile. As far as end game systems and stuff are concerned, I don't know. But yeah, there you go. And I guess I'll remind you then, I do have a link to buy this in the description. It does support me if you guys click it. And I, oh, I, I shouldn't have said that because that now makes it sound like all my enthusiasm has been in service of getting people to click the link. That's not true. I genuinely think it's pretty good. Oh, you can see it on the horizon. No, you can't. That's Kaineng on the horizon. Ooh. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks for chatting. And uh, we'll be back for more of this 100% run tomorrow. I don't want these to get too, too long, obviously. So thank you, everybody. Oh, let's do our sip coffee. I don't actually have any coffee left, but you know. And uh, thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed. By the way, I'm hoping very much, just an aside here, with me getting into a routine with these and finally having some time and sitting down and, you know, doing a lot with you guys uh, I'd like to pick up some of my other projects as well so uh, keep an eye out for those there's someone who's been really snarky and assholey about FF6 in almost every video and it's really annoying to me but there you go so I would like to get back to games and stuff like that as well so we'll see thank you guys I hope you enjoy and I will see you um, very soon tomorrow take care